Hello everyone, welcome to another Iceberg. In 2021, I released the Godzilla Iceberg, and at the time, I thought it was pretty good. However, over the years, I've come to realize that it wasn't that great. In fact, I don't even think it's that good. It desperately needed a remaster. And what better time for a remaster than right now? The black and white version of Shin Godzilla, Monarch Legacy of Monsters, Godzilla Minus One, and Godzilla X Kong have all been released in less than a year. It's never been better to be a Godzilla fan. Now this video is also going to be kind of a double remaster, as not only will I be remastering the original Godzilla Iceberg, but I'll also be taking a few entries from my old Monsterverse Iceberg as well, and putting them in here. So I'm kind of remaking both of them. Anyways, if you enjoy the video, leave a like and subscribe for more icebergs. I've got plenty on the way. I've also got plenty of icebergs I've already made, if you want to go check them out. I've got ones based on Marvel, DC, Call of Duty, Gundam, Evangelion, Gears of War, Cryptozoology, Alien and Predator, and more. Now, without further ado, let's dive into the deaths of the Godzilla Iceberg. Godzilla in the Lost Continent Godzilla in the Lost Continent is quite possibly the most famous piece of Godzilla Lost media. Intended to be the fifth installment in Random House's young adult Godzilla novels in the 90s, the book was cancelled despite being 100% completed purely because bookstores refused to take any more Godzilla books in because of how badly the 1998 Godzilla film was received, despite this book having nothing to do with that film. So yeah, this completely finished book never saw the light of day because of Godzilla 1998. Though you can actually read a bit of the book, as a 12-page preview was included at the very end of the novel Godzilla vs. the Robot Monsters. Hopefully one day the story gets released in some form of media, Minecraft. In January of 2024, a DLC for Minecraft Bedrock Edition was released. This DLC is themed around the entire Godzilla franchise. Unlike older Minecraft DLCs, which just gave the players new skins, this DLC straight up adds an entire game to Minecraft. This game allows up to four players to battle, defend against, and even play as kaiju from every era of Godzilla. The DLC includes kaiju like Godzilla, Kong, Jet Jaguar, Mechagodzilla 1, King Ghidorah, Desestroya, Hedora, Biolanti, Mechagiris, Shin Godzilla, Gigan, Batra, Mecha King Ghidorah, Mothra, Rodan, Ankyrus, Space Godzilla, the Hellhawk, etc. And there's even more you can view as statues in the game's lobby that unlock once you complete parts of the game. Some of these kaiju include Orga, Mechagodzilla 2, Kaiser Ghidorah, Manila, Gorosaurus, Gabara, Gigan 2000, Baragon, Manda, and even the giant Condor. Godzilla in Hell Godzilla in Hell is a five-issue comic miniseries released from July to November of 2015 that tells the story of Godzilla's descent into Hell and how he escapes it. During his time in Hell, he battles old and new foes alike, and even kills Cthulhu. Well, okay, not really Cthulhu. You see, in the final issue, Godzilla battles a kaiju simply called the God Demon that takes heavy inspiration from Cthulhu. This miniseries is known for some crazy stuff going down, like how the God Demon is killed by Godzilla after Godzilla is eaten alive by trillions of small demons, only for them to take the form of Godzilla and each little demon then fires all their atomic breaths at once, and, and like that's what kills them. It's it's crazy. There's also demon versions of Ghidorah, Varen, Desestroya, Angiris, and Rodan. Also, Heaven itself attempts to recruit Godzilla into their army, but Godzilla refuses, and eventually both the angels of Heaven and demons of Hell begin worshipping him. Though Godzilla is just like. I don't care. 
and actually eats some of the angels and demons. A true Sigmazilla. This series is also notable because each issue was actually done by a completely different creative team. So you basically get five different takes on Godzilla going on a rampage in hell. Insert joke about Godzilla and Doom Slayer working together to wipe out hell here. Dogzilla. Dogzilla is a children's book released in 1993, written by Dave Pilkey. And you may recognize it from your school library or scholastic book fair. The book tells the story of a bunch of mice in Mouseopolis who are attacked by the terrifying Dogzilla, who ultimately gets defeated when it gets blasted with water. But then, a year later, a bunch of Dogzilla puppies burst out of a volcano, which I just assume ends the world. There was eventually a companion book made called Cat Kong, but no Dogzilla vs. Cat Kong book, which is kind of surprising. Godzilla vs. Gamera This is a fairly popular matchup that fans of both franchises discuss fairly often. To most people, it seems really weird that Japan's two most famous kaiju have never faced off against each other at any point. And while that's weird, it's not like they haven't tried to make this film. The most famous example was in 2002, when Kadokawa, the company that owns Gamera, approached Toho and offered to co-produce a film titled Godzilla vs. Gamera. And Toho declined the offer, and uh, went on to create the rest of the Millennium films, while Kadokawa made one more Gamera film. However, in September of 2023, the first ever official Godzilla and Gamera crossover was released. Was it a movie? A show? A comic? It was an event in the mobile game Godzilla Battle Line. Yeah, it's pretty underwhelming. The Godzilla Comic the Godzilla comic is a Japanese anthology manga that was released in February of 1990 and features 15 different stories, with each story being done by a different creative team. The genres of the stories range from being deathly serious to just being flat-out comedies. Some stories include Godzilla battling Japanese idols who sing to calm him down, a story where Godzilla battles a samurai in feudal Japan, a parody of all the conference scenes seen in a lot of Godzilla films, and a story in which a cameraman falls in love with an alien attempting to mind-control Godzilla. Overall, it's a crazy manga with some really great art. The manga would receive a sequel in January of 1992, titled The Godzilla Comic Raids Again, this time only featuring 10 stories. I'll go further into detail about a few of these stories featured in these books later, as I feel they deserve their own spots in the iceberg for just how weird they get. Hanna-Barbera Godzilla the original animated series was a Hanna-Barbera cartoon released from September of 1978 to December of 1979. It was produced by both Toho and Hanna-Barbera, and was the first animated Godzilla project to ever be released and the first Godzilla series to air in the United States. The show is essentially a Monster of the Week style show, in which Godzilla, voiced by Ted Cassidy, battles various monsters throughout the city. While the show does have a cult following, it's kind of become forgotten to time, as outside of Godzilla, not a single other monster from his rogues gallery appears in the series. The closest we get is a kinda new version of Manila named Godzuki, who is basically just Godzilla's scrappy-doo. But what's interesting about this version of Godzilla is that he's technically one of the tallest Godzillas ever, standing in at 400 feet. He also looks very different than any other Godzilla that's come before and since, looking more like Reptar from Rugrats. The show lasted for 26 episodes, and hasn't really gotten much attention since its final episode aired. That was until 2021, when in Godzilla Singular Point, you can actually see Godzuki's arm and wing as a plush toy, along with a cartoon version of Godzilla Jr., the Giant Turtle, and the Komodo Thrax from the 1998 cartoon. 
Although, there was a short film released in 1999 titled Godzilla vs. the Y2K Bug, in which the human characters from the show have to face off against the Y2K Bug Kaiju. They try to get Godzilla to fight him, but because they forgot to replace the Godzilla Signal's microchips, they can't. So I guess they die? And I guess that's how the Hanna-Barbera Godzilla continuity ends. Godzilla vs. Charles Barkley Godzilla vs. Charles Barkley is a 1992 commercial for Nike that was heavily promoted. The commercial featured Godzilla battling a giant Charles Barkley in a basketball game for the fate of Japan. Godzilla puts up a decent fight, but is ultimately defeated by Barkley. Though they bonded over the course of the commercial, and by the end they're friends, with Barkley even recruiting Godzilla into the Lakers basketball team. Posters, t-shirts, hats, and even a behind-the-scenes documentary were made in promotion for this commercial. There was even a comic book adaptation of the commercial, released in 1993 by Dark Horse Comics. But this comic tells a completely different story, as it takes place in California instead of Japan. And it's actually explained here why Charles Barkley is like 300 feet tall. It turns out, he used a magic coin to grow. And the comic ends with Godzilla training to get better at basketball. Godzilla wouldn't be the only giant dinosaur that Charles Barkley would face off against, though. In September of 1993, Charles Barkley would host Saturday Night Live, and revealed that he had also played basketball against Barney the Dinosaur in a charity match when Godzilla refused to show. Godzaban Monster puppet show Godzaban, aka Godzaban, is a comedy web series created by Toho that aired from August of 2019 to April of 2023. It's a parody and celebration of the Godzilla franchise that primarily features the kaiju as puppets, though they do occasionally use 2D animation in the show. The show is split up into multiple different stories, like Attention Godzilla, Gojet Jagar Gainkiru, Little and Gigan the Dangerous Duo, Goodnight Monster, etc., and features monsters from literally every era of Godzilla. Well, eras in Japan. I don't think there's any Monsterverse rep in the series. The show also received a manga adaptation and live performances at the 2019 and 2022 Godzilla Fests. The last thing I'll mention is that the show also introduces various new kaiju into the Godzilla franchise, such as Erika, the daughter of Biolanti, and Mia Yarbi, the sister of King Caesar. City Shrouded in Shadow City Shrouded in Shadow is a survival game released exclusively in Japan for the PlayStation 4 in 2017. The game has you playing as multiple people as they try to escape a city being attacked by kaiju. But it's not just the evil kaiju they have to worry about. They also gotta deal with the Yakuza. Even friendly kaiju and mechs pose a threat, as because of their colossal size, they can't exactly see where you are, so they might accidentally step on you or destroy a building that you're in. The game doesn't feature any original kaiju, but instead features a wide variety of licensed monsters and mecha, including monsters from the Gamera franchise, the Ava units and angels from Evangelion, various characters from the Ultraman franchise, mechs from the Pat Labor franchise, and of course, Godzilla kaiju show up as well, such as Godzilla, King Ghidorah, Kiru, Mothra, and Batra. Sadly, while all these monsters and mechs appear in the game, they don't actually interact with each other. For example, Mothra doesn't interact with Gamera, nor does Ultraman interact with Ava Unit 02. All franchises keep to themselves. Now, you might be confused as to why this game didn't receive a Western release. Well, because it's a licensing nightmare. But luckily, you can still play the game on a PS4 outside of Japan. There's just no English subtitles though, so uh... Unless you speak Japanese, good luck figuring out what's going on. Marvel From 1977 to 1979, Marvel released a comic series that ran for 24 issues titled Godzilla, King of the Monsters. The series started out with the intention of it being canon to the Showa films, 
but quickly changed when Marvel integrated Godzilla into the main Marvel Universe. Meaning that yes, Godzilla interacted with and battled a bunch of Marvel heroes, like Iron Man, Thor, the Fantastic Four, Captain America, Spider-Man, Ant-Man the Wasp, Scarlet Witch, Vision, Doctor Doom, etc. Not only did he fight all these heroes and villains, but he was also sent through time by Doctor Doom, which led to him helping Devil Dinosaur battle lizard people in prehistoric times. There was also the Godzilla Squad, a team of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents consisting of members like Jimmy Woo and Dum Dum Dugan, who were brought together to figure out a way to defeat Godzilla. One of their attempts had them shrink Godzilla down to the size of a bug so they could capture him. But, of course, they failed. The comic series also introduced the Monster Menagerie, a team of original kaiju that Godzilla fought and killed. They lasted for like two issues, they didn't really do all that much. Basically, Godzilla just went through the Marvel Universe being a menace to society. Eventually, Marvel lost the rights to produce Godzilla comics, and Godzilla was forced to leave the main Marvel Universe. At least, the Godzilla name left. The character of Godzilla would remain in the universe. However, he'd be redesigned, never referred to as Godzilla, and would appear very rarely. For example, he made an appearance in The Thing, issue 31, released in September of 1985, where he was just referred to as The Monster, and he had a much more amphibious design, probably inspired by the Redosaurus from the 1935 film The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. His most recent appearance in Marvel Comics was in Mighty Avengers issue 1, released in March of 2007, where he made a cameo, looking more like his Showa self. Call of Duty In May 2022, Call of Duty Vanguard, and by extension Call of Duty Warzone, had a crossover event between Call of Duty and the Monsterverse, with Godzilla and Kong appearing on the Warzone map, running around causing chaos. Players were able to briefly control the Titans by locating a Scream device. Using this device, they could then have Godzilla and Kong attack players. Although, the two Titans would do this, even without the Scream device controlling them, so you had to avoid them at all costs. Unless you shoot at them a bunch, which eventually scares them away. This crossover also included various cosmetic packs that allowed players to dress up like Godzilla, Kong, and Mechagodzilla. You could even buy a miniature version of Kong's axe. Not only that, but a new area was added to the Warzone map, called the Dig Site. Like the name suggests, it's a dig site where archaeologists were digging up the skeletal remains of Kong's parents. There was also a multiplayer map added into Vanguard called Mayhem, which paid a tribute to the Showa, Heisei, and Millennium eras of Godzilla films, as you run around and fight in a miniature city used to film kaiju films. There's even a kaiju suit in the background that looks like a bootleg Megalon. The most notable thing about this crossover, however, was a bunch of cave drawings. You could find cave drawings around the map of Godzilla, Kong, Doug, a Skullcrawler, Warbat, Hellhawk, Rockclaw, and shockingly, Shimo. Yes, the brand new Titan featured in Godzilla x Kong made her first appearance in a Call of Duty game. Crazy. In March of 2024, a second collaboration between the two franchises occurred, this time in Modern Warfare 3. This was simply a cosmetic collaboration, although you could buy executions designed after the four main kaiju featured in Godzilla x Kong. Godzilla only appearing in the film My Hero Academia 2 Heroes, Godzilla is a pro hero who is basically just the Heisei Godzilla as a superhero wearing a costume designed after Elvis Presley. And uh, that's kind of it. He only appears briefly in the film and doesn't really do anything. His quirk, or power, is called Toho, an obvious nod to the studio who created Godzilla. This quirk is the reason why he looks like a kaiju. Whether or not he was born looking like Godzilla, 
or slowly turned into him over time, is currently unknown. He is also apparently a movie star, which I guess implies that Godzilla starred in the Heisei Godzilla films in the My Hero Academia universe. Uh, not much else to say. Doug, Barb, and Kevin. In the MonsterVerse, there's a few kaiju who have received nicknames by fans, and even by the people who make the films. For example, the Queen Muto, seen briefly at the end of King of the Monsters, was referred to as Barb by the film's crew. Then there's Kevin, who's not his own kaiju, but instead the leftmost head of King Ghidorah. This nickname became so popular that King of the Monsters director Michael Doherty and Legendary Pictures have actually acknowledged it on Twitter. Spiral Studios even referred to Kevin when announcing their MonsterVerse King Ghidorah statue. And finally, there's Doug. Doug appears briefly in both Godzilla vs. Kong and Godzilla x Kong. Yeah, I'm pronouncing the X. If they didn't want me to say it, they shouldn't have put it in the title. Originally, this kaiju is referred to as a Photodon, a species of lizard monsters featured in the 2005 King Kong film. However, this has since been retconned away. Doug's nickname was created by the podcast It Came From A Monster Movie, and was loved by director Ed Wingard so much that he decided to make Doug the kaiju's official name, with his species name even being Titanus Doug. Godzilla vs. Zilla Here's a quick quiz. Which one of these pictures isn't Godzilla? I'm going to take a wild guess and say at least most of you said, uh, well, obviously this one. Well, you'd be wrong. You see, Zilla isn't actually Zilla in Godzilla 1998. The trademark for the kaiju of that movie is Godzilla. So yes, technically, this is still an incarnation of Godzilla, which I guess makes this an incarnation of Mechagodzilla. But yeah, technically Zilla is a completely different monster that first appears in Final Wars. Confusing? A little bit, but just think of it like this. Zilla is Zilla in everything, except for Godzilla 1998 and Godzilla 98's animated sequel series. Godzilla Monster Apocalypse Monster Apocalypse is a prequel novel to the film Godzilla Planet of the Monsters, released in 2017. The novel, along with its sequel, Project Mechagodzilla, tells the backstory of the Planet of the Monsters film trilogy. Basically, it's just as the title suggests. It's a giant kaiju apocalypse. As of right now, there's no English translation of it, despite it being in high demand. Despite there not being an English translation, we know that there's a ton of kaiju that appear in the book. For example, the book features Hedora, Dagora, Barum, Orga, Megalon, Gabara, Ebera, Manda, the Griffin, the Giant Octopus, Varin, Baragon, and Giris, Mothra, Gorosaurus, Kumanga, Zilla, Biolanti, Rodan, Megagiris. Gizora, Ganymace, Kamibus, Mechagodzilla, Desestroya, King Caesar, Dogora, Kamakiris, Gigan, and even the giant Condor. The last thing I'll mention is that the novel features the character Hachiro Jinguji. He's not an original character, though. He's actually a main character from the 1963 film Atragon. Hopefully one day, Godzilla Monster Apocalypse and its sequel, Project Mechagodzilla, either get fan-translated or officially translated. Bride of Godzilla Bride of Godzilla was a cancelled Godzilla film that would have served as a direct sequel to Godzilla Raids Again. In this film, a giant humanoid robot called the Bride of Godzilla is created to battle Godzilla. The film is notable for being extremely weird, featuring stuff like a mermaid family battling a giant octopus, a woman who gets her memories placed inside of the Bride of Godzilla, multiple flea kaiju would rampage throughout Japan, and a giant chameleon, giant bats, a mammoth, and a giant archaeopteryx would appear in the film. 
It would also be revealed here that Godzilla and Anguirus are both from the Hollow Earth. The film would end with the Bride of Godzilla killing Anguirus by tearing out his throat before a hydrogen bomb goes off inside of her, supposedly killing Godzilla. The film would then end with a Japanese soldier shooting a child. So yeah, it was going to be a very strange film. Bride of Godzilla ended up not happening because Toho feared the film would be too expensive. Though elements of this cancelled film would end up being used in Rodan. And in 2020, the film's script would be adapted into an audio drama as parts of the series Godzilla Unmade. Gigabash Released in August of 2022 for PC, PS4, and PS5, and August of 2023 for the Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and Xbox Series XS, Gigabash is a kaiju fighting game developed by Passion Republic Games, and is heavily inspired by the Pipeworks Godzilla trilogy from the 2000s. The game features various original kaiju you can either play as or fight against in offline and online battles. However, Gigabash would receive a licensed kaiju with the Godzilla pack that includes Godzilla, Gigan, Mechagodzilla 3, or Kiru, and Desestroya. This DLC released in December of 2022, and these kaiju play similar to how they did in the Pipeworks games, with Gigan's block special acting the exact same as it did in Destroy All Monsters Melee and Save the Earth. Gigabash would also receive a DLC for the Ultra series, and this DLC included Ultraman, Ultraman Taiga, Alien Balton, and Chimera. Although, because of regional restrictions and licensing agreements, this DLC is actually not available in China or Japan. As for whether or not this game will receive more Godzilla content, it's possible. In December of 2023, the founder of Gigabash put up a poll on Twitter to see what fans wanted from the studio. And the top two answers were more crossover DLCs and a full-on Godzilla video game. Whether or not this actually means anything is currently not known, but hopefully this is teasing a future Godzilla fighting game. King Kong vs. Godzilla – Alternate Endings? For decades, rumors went around that there were actually two different endings to King Kong vs. Godzilla. One of which, Godzilla wins, and the other, Kong wins. The Godzilla ending was played in Japan, while the King Kong ending was played in America. And because these rumors went around for so long, they basically became fact to most people. But in reality, there is no alternate ending in which Godzilla wins. The rumor started in 1963 by an American magazine called Spaceman, where an article states, quote, Two endings have been filmed, and if you see King Kong vs. Godzilla in Japan, Hong Kong, or some uh, word I cannot say, sector of the world, Godzilla wins. On the other hand, in the USA and England, for instance, Kong wins. And because the Japanese version of King Kong vs. Godzilla wasn't released in the United States until 1985, most people just looked at this article and went, yeah, yeah, it's true. The only truth to this rumor is that in the Japanese version of the film, the characters in the film speculate that Godzilla might still be alive at the end, followed by Godzilla and Kong's roars. While in the American version, they just say they hope to have seen the last of both Kong and Godzilla, followed by only Kong's roar. But oh well, Godzilla kicked Kong's ass in Godzilla vs. Kong in 2021, so you know what? Doesn't matter. Justice League vs. Godzilla vs. Kong Beginning publication in October of 2023, Justice League vs. Godzilla vs. Kong is a seven-issue-long crossover series between the MonsterVerse and DC Comics. Written by Brian Buccioletto, this series sees the titans of the MonsterVerse, Godzilla, Kong, Behemoth, Mechagodzilla, Skyla, Tiamat, and some Skullcrawlers being transported to the DC Universe by Toy Man in order for them to do battle with various DC heroes and villains. And the Titans? 
do just that with pretty much all of the Titans attacking iconic DC locations, like Metropolis, Gotham City, Atlantis, etc. Even DC original kaiju appear in the story, like Titano the Super Ape and a Kraken. Kind of annoying that the Kraken in the story is just like a normal looking Kraken, and not the Monsterverse Kraken from Skull Island. Seems like a missed opportunity, but whatever. Anyways, I don't want to talk too much more about the story, as it's still ongoing. So if you're interested in the story, go check it out. Shin Godzilla First Form In Shin Godzilla, Godzilla goes through five different forms. The second through fifth forms we actually see in their entirety, but to this day, his first form is still a mystery. In fact, all we see of this form in the film is its tail and back. So the only thing we know about this first form is that it has dorsal fins. We can't even check the CGI models for the film or the practical models, as the tail was the only thing rendered. Some people don't even know that the first and second forms are different. Despite not knowing much about it, that hasn't stopped fans from speculating about what it looks like. Most seem to agree that it probably looks near identical to its second form, just without its limbs. Godzilla Cataclysm Godzilla Cataclysm is a five-issue miniseries written by Colin Bunn, and released by IDW from May of 2014 to August of the same year. In this universe, Godzilla has destroyed most of the world, and humanity is struggling to survive. In the story, Biolanti is actually one of the hero kaiju, as she's trying to regenerate the planet alongside Mothra, who acts as her protector. Godzilla obviously doesn't want this, and so conflict in this post-apocalyptic nightmare arises. This entire situation, like the world being like, you know, destroyed and all, only happened because humanity built a mind control device that allowed psychics to make the kaiju of the world passive. And this device actually worked for a while, until the kaiju figured out what was going on and uh, got pretty upset. So they continued to their rampage, helping Godzilla annihilate humanity. Desestroya even shows up towards the end of the story, which causes Godzilla and Biolanti to work together to kill him, which seemingly wins Godzilla's respect as he bails after the fight, letting Biolanti do her thing. Jet Jaguar's Origin Jet Jaguar was the result of a contest held by Seiyu from 1971 to January of 1972 called Children Monster University in which children would send in ideas for a new monster to appear in the next Godzilla film. And in March of 1972, somebody won, and the design, called Red Alone, looked like... Well, I can't actually show you what it looked like, because it's never surfaced online. Toho would take the design and redesign it, and that redesign looked like... Uh, well... I mean, it's a little different than how Jet Jaguar usually looks. This design would be altered to look more like an Ultraman or Zone Fighter-like character, something that designer Teriyoshi Nakano was a bit hesitant about. But they did change it and renamed him Jet Jaguar. So yeah, Jet Jaguar technically owes his existence to Red alone. Bagan. Poor Bagan. You see, Bagan is a scrapped kaiju that was supposed to appear in nine different films, but was scrapped from each of them. His first appearance was supposed to be in Resurrection of Godzilla in 1980, where he would be a kaiju that keeps on evolving into different things. For example, he would start out as like an ape, and then would become a sea monster. But when that film was cancelled, so was he. But when the film was revived for 1983, so was he. But when that revival was cancelled, so was he. Then, in 1990, there was supposed to be a Mothra movie titled Mothra vs. Bagan, where he would be a Chinese demon that was the ancient enemy of Mothra. But then this film got cancelled. But then it was decided that Bagan would appear in the third Heisei Godzilla film, where Bagan would be created by aliens who were responsible for the Nazca civilization's extinction in Peru. But then this film got cancelled. 
Then Toho decided to create Mothra vs. Godzilla. No, no, it was, it was a different Mothra vs. Godzilla film. And this film was also going to have Baggett in it. But then this film got cancelled. Then, in 1991, it was decided to make Godzilla vs. Baggin, but then it was cancelled after King Ghidorah proved to be a much popular choice. Because Godzilla vs. Biolanti wasn't a huge financial success, so Toho wanted the next film to be as successful as possible. Then, in 1995, Baggin got one final chance to appear in the Heisei era, in yet another version of Godzilla vs. Baggin but this was cancelled as well. Then, Baggin was intended to appear in the Rebirth of Mothra trilogy, but his appearance was scrapped. And finally, he was meant to play some kind of role in the cancelled sequel to Orochi, the Eight-Headed Dragon. Despite all of his failed film appearances, Baggin has appeared in two different video games. Super Godzilla in 1993, where he served as the final boss, and in Godzilla Movie Studio Tour in 1998. But his most famous appearance was on the small screen, because in 2022, Baggin finally made an on-screen appearance in Godzaban in a handful of episodes. His first episode being a special episode exclusive to a Blu-ray release of the series. In the episode, he battles Mothra and loses. But hey, Baggin finally appeared in something, so that's a win. Gemstone Godzilla Films The Gemstone Godzilla Films are a... kind of trilogy, but kind of duology of Godzilla Films, directed by Takuya Wenishi. In 2019, he directed the short film G vs. G, as an entry for the Gemstone Creators Audition Contest. This contest was held to basically find talent for Toho, with the winner of the contest being given the opportunity to work with Toho in an official capacity. And this short film, G vs. G, won the contest, and Wanishi went on to work on more Godzilla projects. But this time, they would be official short films. The next film he made was Godzilla vs. Gigan Rex, which was released in November of 2022. While a sequel to G vs. G, that short film isn't official, so it's not officially canon with Godzilla vs. Gigan Rex. So, while Gigan Rex is technically a sequel, it's also technically the first installment of the series. It's weird. Anyways, this short introduced a brand new kaiju, Gigan Rex, who quickly became a fan favorite. The success of this short film led to a sequel titled Godzilla vs. Megalon. This film not only gave Megalon a brand new design, but it also had a budget increase, allowing for short live-action segments to be filmed. These two films have been dubbed the Gemstone Godzilla films, and have become very popular in the fanbase. Last thing I'll mention is that it's heavily implied in these short films that the Godzilla featured in the films is actually a grown-up Godzilla Jr. from the Heisei era, making the Gemstone films a continuation of the Heisei films. This is backed up by the opening shots of Godzilla vs. Gigan Rex being extremely similar to the final shot of Desestroya. Gigan Rex also features narration explaining that in the Gemstone films, Godzilla last appeared 25 years ago, which is roughly the time between the release of Desestroya and Gigan Rex. Despite it being pretty obvious that this is meant to be a continuation of the Heisei era, Toho have not commented on this, so as of right now, it's just a fan theory. Godzilla Rage Across Time Rage Across Time is a five-issue miniseries released by IDW from August 2016 to November of the same year. The story is about how in the modern day, scientists discover that Godzilla, and other kaiju like him, have actually appeared throughout human history, with each issue of the comic featuring Godzilla and other kaiju going on a rampage throughout history. These eras in history include 1274 Japan, where Godzilla shows up and battles Gigan and Megalon, who are under the control of the Mongols. 
218 BCE, where Godzilla encounters Hannibal and his army on their way to assault Rome. 1348, where Megaguirus is spreading the Black Death across Europe. But luckily for humanity, Mothra's there to stop her. Ancient Greece, where the Greek gods order the Hydra to kill Godzilla. But the Hydra fails and Godzilla kills almost all of the Greek gods. Zeus survives the onslaught and becomes mortal after realizing that he needs to learn about humanity in order to be a good god. And so, now a mortal, he decides to settle down in Pompeii. And uh, yeah, then Godzilla shows up and uh, Pompeii happens. And finally, prehistoric times, where Godzilla and other kaiju live amongst dinosaurs where they then have to team up to battle alien UFOs, who are there to drop off humanity. Godzilla 1998 Sequel Godzilla 1998 was meant to be the start of a massive franchise. Not only was it supposed to get a cartoon sequel series, which we got, but there was also supposed to be at least two sequel films. Now, we know absolutely nothing about the third entry in the series, but we actually know quite a lot about the cancelled sequel. The film was intended to take place primarily in Australia, and the film would begin with Nick Nicktatopoulos discovering the baby Godzilla in New York City. And like the cartoon series, this baby Godzilla imprints on him. After being separated for nearly two years, the two are reunited in Australia. The Godzilla baby from earlier is now the size of the first Godzilla, and it has its own herd of teen Zillas. Nick and Godzilla then bond, as Godzilla recognizes Nick as her mother. Now Godzilla in this movie, and her herd of teen Zillas, are being blamed for attacks that it didn't commit. In reality, a new kaiju committed these atrocities. This new kaiju is named the Queen Bitch. No, that's, that's not a joke, that's what it's called. At least, that's what the script calls it, I'm sure they would have given it an official name if the film actually happened, because I can't imagine them selling toys to kids called the Queen Bitch. Anyways, because they think Godzilla's responsible for these attacks, the military then shows up and kills pretty much all of Godzilla's babies, except for one. And now that most of the Godzilla babies are gone, the Queen Bitch begins to spread her swarm across Australia. Godzilla eventually shows up and helps out the military, and battles the Queen Bitch. She would ultimately kill the Queen, and swim off to Monster Island with her last surviving baby. And that's how the film would end. Here's a makeup tip from Godzilla. To make a prominent nose look smaller, paint your eyes up to look bigger. Thanks, Godzilla! Cartoon Network, go go Godzilla, yeah yeah. Singular Point Kaiju Confusion. Prior to Godzilla's Singular Point being released, many Godzilla fans took to Twitter to express how hyped they were that Toho was giving Titanosaurus and Gabara another chance to prove themselves after seeing them in the trailers for the show. And when the show came out fans were disappointed, as it turns out that Titanosaurus and Gabara weren't in the show. Instead of Titanosaurus, this kaiju was actually just Godzilla in its aquatic form. And instead of being Gabara, this kaiju was actually a new monster named Salunga. Always, Sunsets on 3rd Street 2. In the 2007 film, Always, Sunset on 3rd Street 2, there's a very brief scene where Godzilla appears entirely in CGI. This Godzilla, dubbed Third Street Godzilla, was based directly on the GMK version of the character. This cameo is very notable for two reasons. 
The first being that this is the only time Godzilla appeared in a movie during the franchise's decade-long hiatus between Final Wars and Godzilla 2014. And the second reason it's so notable is that always, Sunset on 3rd Street 2's director, Takashi Yamazaki, would later go on to direct Godzilla Minus One. Godzilla 1998 is canon to GMK. In Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah Giant Monsters All Out Attack, aka GMK, there's a brief scene where it's mentioned how Godzilla might have been the monster responsible for the attack on New York City a few years ago, though this idea is quickly thrown out, as everyone in the room agrees that that giant monster that attacked New York City wasn't actually Godzilla, and it was just the Americans being stupid. Now, this film was released in 2001, so it's very clearly a reference to Godzilla 1998. In fact, this line was put into the film just as a jab towards that movie. But in doing so, it technically makes Godzilla 1998 canon to the GMK continuity. Varen gets left behind. Poor Varen. Originally appearing in his own solo film in 1958, Varen has become a cult favorite kaiju, but has constantly been pushed to the side. He had an extremely minor appearance in Destroy All Monsters, and was considered for several different movies, like GMK, Godzilla vs. Gigan The Return of King Ghidorah, and Godzilla vs. Giant Monster Varen, which was originally intended to be the final installment of the Heisei era. However, Godzilla vs. Gigan The Return of King Ghidorah and Godzilla vs. Giant Monster Varen were both cancelled. And Varen would end up being scrapped from GMK. Though despite all of his scrapped appearances, he's at least appeared in some video games, comics, and novels. I should also mention here that because Varen was scrapped from GMK, monster designer Fuyuki Shinada became saddened by Varen's removal. So he sculpted Varen's facial fins onto the film's King Ghidorah suit, so, in a way, Varen still has a presence in the movie. Scrapped Godzilla Game Monsters Like any fighting game, the Pipeworks Godzilla games and Godzilla PS4 have some scrapped fighters. Here's the ones we know about. For Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee, Jed Jagar was supposed to be in the game, but for whatever reason, Toho refused to let Pipeworks use him. Godzilla 1954 and Space Godzilla were also considered for the game. And finally, there's Baragon, who was cut from the game despite being about 70% complete. For Godzilla Save the Earth, there's Batra, Super Mechagodzilla, Titanosaurus, Hedora, Godzilla 1954, the Showa Mechagodzilla, and Varen. Biolanti was also going to be in the game, and was even completed. However, because development on her was behind schedule, Atari couldn't get the license in time for the character, so she went unused in the final game. And finally, Star Falcon would have been an alternate form for Mongira, but was scrapped during development. For Godzilla Unleashed, Hedora, Mechanicog, and Monster X, aka Kaiser Ghidorah, were intended to be part of the Aliens faction in the game while Baggin and Zilla were intended to be part of the Mutants faction. And finally, King Kong was intended to be in the game as well, and would have been part of the Earth Defenders faction, along with Gamera, but both of them were scrapped due to licensing issues. It's also worth mentioning here that Batra and the Showa-era Gigan were exclusive characters for the PS2 version of the game. It's unknown if they were considered for the main Wii version of the game, but if they were, they obviously didn't make the cut. And those were the licensed characters that were cut from the game. There's actually three more monsters that were cut, as during the game's development, a poll was put out to let players vote on an original kaiju that would appear in the game. And Obsidious was the kaiju who won. The ones who didn't make it were Fire Lion, Lightning Bug, and The Visitor. And finally, for Godzilla PS3 slash PS4, King Ghidorah from the Rebirth of Mothra 3 was planned to be in the game, but was replaced instead with the Heisei Ghidorah, 
due to Rebirth of Mothra's Ghidorah's power sets and design being too complex for the developers to work on during the time constraints put on the developers. King Kong and Zone Fighter were also considered for the game. Monster X, aka Kaiser Ghidorah, was also going to be in the game, but was scrapped due to the time constraints I mentioned earlier. And finally, Mecha King Ghidorah was planned to appear in the PS3 version of the game, but was cut. Luckily, he does show up in the PS4 version. King Caesar's Forgotten Ability Strangely, in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, the Black Hole Alien Leader mentions that King Caesar could rouse other monsters if he's awakened. And in the film's official English dub, the Black Hole Alien Leader says, quote, We'll be in trouble if King Caesar brings other monsters to life. So, does this mean that King Caesar has the ability to bring Kaiju back to life? Nobody knows. It's possible this was leftover dialogue from a scrapped plotline, but regardless, it's never been brought up ever again in any piece of Godzilla media since. Mega Godzilla In early 2020, there was a toy leak for Godzilla vs. Kong. And one of these toys was called Mega Godzilla, that had Godzilla wearing red power armor. Most people assumed that this was just a toy exclusive gimmick. However, Mega Godzilla was at one point going to be in the movie. According to VFX artist Richard Cow, who worked on the Hong Kong fight in GVK, Mega Godzilla was going to be in the film at some point. But in late 2020, it was removed from the film for an unknown reason. Probably because Legendary realized that uh, it was kind of stupid. And when this aspect of the film was cut, the Mega Godzilla toy was cancelled. As to what exactly Mega Godzilla was, we don't really know. Although, rumors state that in the original version of Godzilla vs. Kong, Godzilla was going to be controlled by Apex who were using an upgraded form of the Orca from King of the Monsters. Godzilla Island Godzilla Island was a show that ran from October of 1997 to September of 1998. It ran for 256 three-minute long episodes. The show used action figures to portray the kaiju that appeared in the show, and tells the story of all the world's monsters living on an island called Godzilla Island. I assume this was originally Monster Island, but because Godzilla has a pretty big ego, he gave the island a new name. Anyways, with all the world's kaiju living there, they get up to some crazy situations. Especially when aliens attempt to invade the island. The show also features various human characters that are filmed in live action. The show was fairly lighthearted and featured various kaiju that have never appeared in anything else, like Medical Jet Jaguar, Firefighter Jet Jaguar, Black Mecha Godzilla, Neo Hidora, Hyper Mecha King Ghidorah, and Super Special Space Godzilla High Grade Type 2. Basically just variations of other kaiju. Godzilla and Evangelion So Godzilla and Evangelion have a bit of a history together. And by history, I mean none. That was until the mid-2010s when Anno, the creator of Neon Genesis Evangelion, was hired to direct Shin Godzilla. And this has led to multiple different crossovers between Shin Godzilla and Evangelion, with most of them just being marketing crossovers. Though there was Godzilla vs. Evangelion The Real 4D, which was a 17-minute-long film created for Universal Studios Japan, where Shinji, Asuka, and Rei show up in their Ava suits to stop Shin Godzilla, who's just hyped as always to be destroying Japan. During their fight, King Ghidorah shows up with an all-new design that has been fan-dubbed Shin King Ghidorah. His arrival causes Godzilla and the Avas to team up to save the day. Wait a second, does this mean that in this continuity, Shin King Ghidorah and Shin Godzilla are both angels? There's also P. Godzilla vs. Evangelion, G-Cell Awakening, which is a pachinko game with a story. The story involves Rei being taken over by King Ghidorah's aura, 
and becomes Ghidorah Ray. So Godzilla and the Ava pilots are then forced to work together to defeat her and King Ghidorah. Also, Godzilla mutates Ava Unit 1 with his atomic breath, which gives Ava Unit 1 a Godzilla mutation. Side note, Ghidorah has an angel core in this, so I guess at least he's an angel. Jury's still out on Shin Godzilla. The most recent crossover was in November of 2022, where in the mobile game Godzilla Battle Line, there was an event that added Ava Units 1, 2, 0, and 8, along with two angels, from the rebuild of Evangelion films into the game. Zone Fighter Zone Fighter was a series released from April of 1973 to September of the same year. This show is actually canon to the Showa era of Godzilla, as Godzilla himself would make guest appearances multiple times throughout its 26 episode run. King Ghidorah and Gigan would also appear in the show, and would be taken down by the efforts of Godzilla and Zone Fighter. In fact, Showa Gigan's canonical death actually happens in Zone Fighter. The show takes place in between the events of Godzilla vs. Megalon and Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, and is where Godzilla got his lesser-known title of Monster of Justice. As for the show itself, it's an action series similar to Ultraman, about a man who turns into the superhero Zone Fighter, to defend Earth from some evil aliens. The show itself wasn't very popular when it was airing, in fact, that's why it only had 26 episodes. It was supposed to have more, but due to low ratings, the show was cancelled, without resolving the show's main conflict. Despite this, Zone Fighter has a strong cult following. But despite this cult following, Zone Fighter has yet to appear in anything after his show's cancellation, minus a brief cameo in Singular Point's credits. If you want to watch the episodes of Zone Fighter, where Godzilla, King Ghidorah, and Gigan appear, they appear in episodes 4, 5, 6, 11, 15, 21, and 25. Scrapped Monsterverse Titans Originally, the ending of King of the Monsters would have had plenty of recognizable kaiju from Godzilla's past showing up to bow before him. Concept art showed Gigan, King Kong, Baragon, Angiris, Kamunga, and Kamakiris. However, besides Kong, Legendary didn't have the rights to any of these characters, so they would have to pay a lot of money in order to use these monsters for this brief cameo. So instead of paying a ton of money for this little cameo, Legendary Studios decided to create new kaiju, like Behemoth. Dragon Ball Godzilla and a bunch of his monster buddies have appeared in the Dragon Ball franchise. While they're all cameos, they are canon to Dragon Ball, with Godzilla actually having a tiny bit of plot relevance in the film Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F. Although Dragon Ball films aren't actually canon to the anime, so I guess this appearance isn't canon. But anyways, there are many different kaiju cameos in both the anime and the manga including King Ghidorah, Baragon, Rodan, and even Gamera. Skelly Turtle Skelly Turtle, aka the Mystery Bones of Infant Island, is a very minor kaiju featured in Mothra vs. Godzilla. He just kinda appears in the background. Nobody acknowledges him. He just sits there, looking around. So why was Skelly Turtle featured in the film at all? Well, people have speculated that its inclusion in the film was actually a reference to the 1962 Italian documentary Mondo Cane, aka It's a Dog's World, as that film features a turtle skeleton on the radioactive beaches of Bikini Atoll, which only became radioactive because of nuclear tests, which in the Godzilla universe is what created him. Since its original appearance in Mothra vs. Godzilla, Skelly Turtle has become a fan-favorite kaiju, and has even had official merch made of him. He's even made cameos in several Godzilla comics, one in Godzilla Rulers of Earth in 2014, and one in Godzilla Monsters and Protectors All Hail the King in 2023. 
Godzilla and Anguirus can talk. When King Kong spoke in sign language in Godzilla vs. Kong in 2021, people were pretty surprised, and a lot of people thought this was the first time that a kaiju has ever talked in a Godzilla film. Well, no, that's, that's not true actually. While Mothra, Rodan, and Godzilla talk in Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, you don't actually hear them. It's just the fairies translating them. And while Manila talks in All Monsters Attack, that's in a dream sequence, so it doesn't count. The first time we hear Kaiju talking in a Godzilla movie is actually in Godzilla vs. Gigan, where for some reason, Godzilla and Anguirus talk. In the original Japanese cut of the film, we only see speech bubbles around them as they talk. But in the English dub, both Godzilla and Anguirus talk. And it's as weird as you'd think it would be. And if you're wondering who voices Godzilla in Anguirus, it's voice actor Ted Thomas. Godzilla 3D Also known as Godzilla 3D to the Max was a cancelled IMAX 3D Godzilla film that was in development from 2003 to 2009. It would have included a new kaiju called Deathla, which would be hundreds of little kaijus that looked like locusts that would destroy the Amazon rainforest, the Bahamas, and Denmark for some reason. Anyways, Godzilla would show up to stop him, and all these little locusts would then merge into one kaiju, and there would be a battle across the globe. And in order to chase Deathla around the world, Godzilla would once again take to the skies. No, this isn't a joke. They actually were going to bring this power back. Which makes sense, because Godzilla 3D to the max would have been directed by Yoshimitsu Bano, the director of Godzilla vs. Hedora. Anyways, the fight would take the two to New York City during a blizzard, and it's here that Godzilla would almost die, only for him to be given strength by hearing children across the globe shouting for him to get back up. So Godzilla would get up and save the 9-11 monument and force Deathla to abandon Earth. Godzilla would then travel to the Amazon rainforest, then wink at the camera and disappear. This film would be in development hell for about six years before it was finally cancelled in 2009. Though this film would actually inspire Legendary Pictures to make their own Godzilla film. So in a weird way, Godzilla defending the 9-11 monument and being cheered on by children across the globe gave us the MonsterVerse, which in turn gave us Shin Godzilla. More on that later. Continuation, King Kong vs. Godzilla In 1963, Toho began work on a direct sequel to King Kong vs. Godzilla, titled Continuation, King Kong vs. Godzilla. Though this was only the working title, the name probably would have been changed if the film actually happened. Anyways, a screenplay was written by Shinichi Sikizawa, the writer for Varen, Mothra, and King Kong vs. Godzilla. The plot would have revealed that Godzilla was actually killed by Kong at the end of the first film. Meanwhile, King Kong would be living in Africa, and would begin to stalk a Japanese search party looking for a missing person and missing baby. Kong begins to cause some trouble, which requires the JSDF to revive Godzilla, whose corpse is being used in a theme park. They do this so that Godzilla can kill Kong. The two kaiju battle it out twice in the film, with their second battle taking them near an active volcano, which leads to both of their potential deaths. The film was also set to introduce a new kaiju, a giant scorpion that King Kong would fight pretty early in the film and kill while in Africa. The film was ultimately rejected and it was decided to make a different film called Frankenstein vs. Godzilla. In 1964, Toho began production on Frankenstein vs. Godzilla, 
a film about Frankenstein's monster battling the King of the Monsters, if you couldn't guess. The plot would follow a child who was a survivor of the Hiroshima atomic bombing. This child would be revealed to be Frankenstein's monster, who was originally dead, but was resurrected by the atomic bombing, as the bomb's radiation allowed him to regrow himself from his heart, which for some reason was the only part of him left, and was being dissected in Japan. The monster quickly grows in size, which results in the JSDF freeing Godzilla from his icy tomb. Yeah, after battling King Kong, Godzilla would be frozen yet again. They free him in hopes that Godzilla will kill the monster, and the two battle it out, until an earthquake causes a massive flood, which washes Godzilla out to sea, while Frankenstein's monster falls into a massive crevice, into some lava. Toho would eventually cancel the film, though elements of its script would be reused for two future films, Mothra vs. Godzilla and Frankenstein vs. Baragon. Manila takes over the Showa era. There's a popular fan theory that Manila from Son of Godzilla is not the same Manila as the one from Destroy All Monsters. There's multiple reasons as to why people think this. For starters, Manila in Destroy All Monsters can no longer use his atomic breath, which Manila at the end of Son of Godzilla was able to do. And in the film's timeline, Destroy All Monsters takes place 32 years after Son of Godzilla. So why hasn't he grown up to be like Godzilla in that time? Well, there's two theories. Some say that Manila died in between the events of the films, and that the Manila in Destroy All Monsters is actually a new Manila that Godzilla found. But there's another theory, that the Godzilla from Godzilla vs. Hedora, all the way to the end of the Showa era, is actually Manila all grown up. The only real evidence for this is that the suit used to portray Godzilla in Son of Godzilla looks extremely battered and older than the other suits, so maybe shortly after Son of Godzilla, he passed away, and Manila grew up and took on his own Manila son. This is all a fan theory though, Toho has never commented on this. Godzilla Legend, The Asuka Fortress This was a cancelled 1979 Godzilla film. The film would take place in the year 2000, and would have began with Godzilla being sedated in the Japan Trench. Meanwhile, a new superweapon called the Asuka Fortress would be created. It would be a giant robotic supercomputer designed to defend Japan against all threats. Though the robots would eventually gain sentience and independence and begin a mission to exterminate all life on Earth. Basically, every single AI gone rogue story. Godzilla is then freed from the Japan Trench in order to battle the giant robot. And after defeating a bunch of smaller robotic minions, Godzilla would take on the Asuka Fortress. But he would lose the fight. And so, a bunch of humans would infiltrate the robot and shut it down from the inside, which would allow Godzilla to destroy it. While this film was scrapped, elements of it would be used in the 1989 film Gunhead. Toho also considered reviving this project for the third Heisei Godzilla film, but ultimately didn't. Godzilla Reborn After Godzilla 2000's Millennium received its US release, Toho briefly considered letting America make a sequel to Godzilla 2000. This film was considered for a 2001 release, and the film would use Suitmation. Originally, this film started out as a joke from Michael Schlesinger, the writer of the American dub of Godzilla 2000. However, after joking about it with his friends, he came to the conclusion that an American-made sequel would actually make sense, so the film was put into discussion. The film's development was actually going pretty well, until Columbia Pictures, the company that said they'd produce the film, backed out of the deal and the film would be cancelled shortly afterwards due to financial troubles caused by Columbia Pictures backing out. As for the film's plot, we actually know a little bit about it. The film would take place primarily in Hawaii, and Godzilla would battle a new kaiju named Miba, a giant lava bat kaiju. 
Godzilla would be killed by the US military midway through the film. But when the US military realized that they can't stop Amoeba, they would clone Godzilla to fight him. Toho apparently really liked the script. However, they requested Godzilla not die, and instead be put into a coma. Schlesinger would agree, but it didn't matter in the end, because the film got cancelled. Actors being discussed to appear in the film included Jamie Lee Curtis, Bruce Campbell, Christopher Lee, Dick Miller, and Leonard Nimoy. Godzilla the Ride, Giant Monsters Ultimate Battle Godzilla the Ride, Giant Monsters Ultimate Battle is a ride featured in the Cybuan Amusement Park. Opening up in May of 2021, the ride has up to 70 guests ride around in armored cars, while Godzilla and King Ghidorah do battle around them. Obviously, the ride has guests watching a screen the entire time, much like the Transformers ride or Spider-Man ride at Universal Studios. The ride lasts about 5 minutes, and even has a little appearance from Rodan. While a pretty cool attraction, it wouldn't be super noteworthy if not for two things. The first is that this ride actually received a prequel attraction. Honestly, didn't even know that prequel attractions were a thing. This prequel attraction ran from November of 2022 to July of 2023, and it was an escape room titled Godzilla the Mission, Escape the Looming Danger of a Giant Monster. The second and more well-known reason is that Godzilla's design in the ride was actually the blueprint for Godzilla's design in Minus One. This is probably because Takashi Yamazaki was actually the attraction's writer and kaiju designer. 90s Godzilla vs. King Kong The third installment of the Heisei series was originally intended to be a rematch between Godzilla and King Kong. All we know about this film's plot was that King Kong was going to fall in love with a human scientist, who would go on to later turn him into a cyborg. The film never happened for one major reason. Turner Entertainment, who held the King Kong IP, demanded royalties for the use of the character. And so, instead of paying for the monster, Toho was like, we'll just do Godzilla vs. Mechani Kong. But even though Toho owned Mechani Kong, because Mechani Kong was so similar to Kong's likeness, it would have been difficult to avoid Turner Entertainment getting mad again. So Toho just decided to make Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Godzilla vs. Barubaroi This is a cancelled Godzilla film that was meant to be the final installment in the Heisei era. The plot revolved around Godzilla, who was nearing the end of his life. Instead of just chilling out until he passes away, Godzilla's gotta battle a new kaiju born from the Oxygen Destroyer, Barubaroi. Meanwhile, G-Force's commander is in a conflict with a scientist trying to recreate the Oxygen Destroyer, as he fears that the Japanese Self-Defense Force would adopt the Oxygen Destroyer and use it against people. Also, the Gotenga would make its Heisei-era debut this time being an upgraded version of the Super X. Anyways, back to Barubaroi, his whole thing would be absorbing stuff, and would attempt to absorb Godzilla during the final battle. This would prove to be his downfall, as because Godzilla's dying, the cell he absorbs from Godzilla actually end up killing him. Godzilla would then die, and Godzilla Jr. would turn into the new Godzilla, and watch his father's body crumble into ash. Oh, and this film would have also featured the Anguirus Hound, a new take on Anguirus. Although he wouldn't really do much in the film, as he'd end up being killed by Barubaroi. Written by Hideki Oka, this film would be scrapped in favor of Godzilla vs. Destroya, which kept many of the film's plot elements. The 2020 Godzilla Cinematic Universe in 2018, it was announced by Toho that they'd be creating their own Godzilla cinematic universe starting in 2020, after Godzilla vs. Kong was released. The announcement read, quote, After 2021, we're thinking of a potential strategy that releases Godzilla movies uninterrupted at a rate of every two years. Although, there is a preference for a yearly pace as well. 
the future of the series and its forwarding developments are very conscious of the method of shared universe. Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, etc. could all share a single worldview, much like a Marvel movie, where Iron Man and the Hulk can cross over with each other. It is said that each movie can be a possible film production where any one of them could lead a film of their own, as the titular character. This cinematic universe has been nicknamed World of Godzilla. Now obviously, no Godzilla cinematic universe was started in 2020 or 2021. However, with the release of Minus One, many believe Toho is now finally starting their cinematic universe. However, as of right now, no sequel to Minus One has been announced by Toho. In fact, Toho has announced that they're ta taking their time with Godzilla films to assure their quality, which is very different from their original announcement of potentially yearly releases. Dive, dive, dive! Godzilla heads for the murky depths of Cartoon Network for a little R&R. &R. Await his return, mortal. Godzilla's hiding, and it's up to you to find him. Just buy a medium or larger drink. If you find a Godzilla, use your decoder to reveal what you want. Uh oh. I think I need a bigger bulk. Remain still, Cartoon Network viewers. Do not provoke Godzilla. Godzilla Jr. is Godzilla 2000. A very common misunderstanding in the Godzilla fanbase is that the Godzilla featured in Godzilla 2000 is actually Godzilla Jr. from the Heisei era, all grown up. While an interesting idea on paper, it's just not true, as Godzilla 2000 isn't canon to the Heisei series, and is instead a direct sequel to the 1954 film. Pacific Rim Crossover because both the MonsterVerse and Pacific Rim films are owned by Legendary, there's been talks of a MonsterVerse and Pacific Rim crossover, despite that being quite impossible in-universe. The only way that this could work is that the Jaegers from Pacific Rim somehow traveled to the MonsterVerse through that portal at the end of Uprising in an attempt to kill all Kaiju. But while in the MonsterVerse, they discover that not all Kaiju are evil, and instead team up with Godzilla to defeat some other kaiju. And then they just, like, leave, I guess. Maybe they could also set up Jet Jagar as a Jaeger being controlled by an AI. Legendary. Hire me. I'll write the film. Anyways, it doesn't seem like Pacific Rim and the MonsterVerse will be crossing over, after the critically panned and box office bomb that was Pacific Rim Uprising. Which is sad for those wanting a crossover, as the writer of Pacific Rim Uprising, Stephen S. D. Knight, confirmed on Twitter in February of 2021 that he had actually planned on ending Pacific Rim 3 in a way that somehow, quote, married the two universes. But technically, a crossover between Pacific Rim and Godzilla has already happened. In Pacific Rim Uprising, the skulls of Gigan, Batra, Baragon, and the Mudos briefly appear on screen. God Godzilla. God Godzilla is an unofficial Godzilla variation that appeared in the Worst Case Invasion of Earth, an Ultra 7 doujin. God Godzilla is an enormous Godzilla variation with giant wings that form a cape. He's also constantly glowing. Basically, think of this Godzilla as like the ultimate Godzilla. Now, for whatever reason, people often mistake God Godzilla for being an official Godzilla variation, despite that not being true. He's from a doujin, a fan-created work. It's still a pretty cool design, but it's not official, so don't expect to see any Godzilla media ever referencing this. Godzilla vs. Chaos This was a scrapped Godzilla film that would have served as the final entry in the Heisei era. This film would be about a three-way battle between Godzilla, Godzilla Jr., and the new alien kaiju, Chaos, 
who was using the bioenergy from the ghost of the original Godzilla to make him stronger. Outside of that, nothing else is really known about this scrapped film. Because there's so little information about this movie, I'm just going to assume that the chaos in this film was actually perfect chaos from Sonic Adventure. Love Hina In the extremely average romantic comedy anime Love Hina, released in 2000, there's an episode that has Godzilla just randomly show up on the news, and the cast of characters don't really seem all that phased by it, implying that this is a normal occurrence. We also later see them inside of one of Godzilla's footprints. So I guess Love Hina takes place in one of the Godzilla timelines. My guess, the Showa era. Hidora's Scrapped Fight in Final Wars Hidora was originally going to have a much larger appearance in Godzilla Final Wars, where he'd battle Godzilla for a lot longer than he does in the actual film. There was also supposed to be a scene in the film where Hedora was going to attack the island of Odaba, and this scene was going to parody the comedy series Bayside Shakedown. However, producer Shogo Tomiyama rejected this scene, which left Hedora with only one scene in the film where he's quickly killed by Godzilla. The crew on the film were so upset that Hedora had almost been scrapped from the film that they included footage of Hedora attacking Tokyo in the film's credits, as a way to make up for his small appearance. Seventeen years later, though, Hedora would finally face off against Godzilla again in the short film Godzilla vs. Hedora, where the Final Wars Hedora suit and the Final Wars Godzilla suit were used to portray the battle. This short was also made to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Godzilla vs. Hedora. Godzilla vs. Junior Godzilla This is a cancelled Godzilla film that would have served as the final installment of the Heisei era. As the name suggests, the plots of the film would have been about Godzilla and his son battling to the death for whatever reason. G-Force would then show up and actually kill Godzilla. And that's pretty much all we know about this film. Singular Point Cameos During the credits of each episode of Godzilla Singular Point, there's an insane amount of cameos shown off. Seriously, pretty much every Godzilla film is referenced in some way. Not only do we see King Caesar, Manda, Mothra, Biolanti, Anguirus, Monsterverse Rodan, Kiru, Jet Jagar, Hedora, Kamunga, and Meganulan, but we also see multiple human characters from previous films, like Godzilla Final Wars, 2000 Millennium, Godzilla Against Mechagodzilla, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, Zone Fighter, the original 1954 film, Ebera, Horror of the Deep, Shin Godzilla, GMK, All Monsters Attack, Godzilla vs. Gigan, Godzilla vs. Hedorah, and even Godzilla 1998. It's insane how many references they were able to throw into the credits. Regardless of how you feel about Singular Point, you can tell the people behind it really loved the franchise. Shin Godzilla 2 So Shin Godzilla 2 was a potential film that fans would talk about all the time in the late 2010s. After all, Shin Godzilla ends with a mysterious scene of scary-looking Godzilla people emerging from his tail. However, with Minus One's release, it's clear that we're never getting a Shin Godzilla 2. But was there ever a time where Shin Godzilla 2 was possible? Well, actually, yes. In 2022, Anno revealed that he had actually written a proposal for a Shin Godzilla 2 with titles like Shin Godzilla Reigns Again and Shin Godzilla's Counterattack being thrown around as potential names. He had written the proposal with the idea that the film would be released in 2018, and would be a very low-cost film. Anno also didn't want to direct the film, and instead was expecting Shinji Higuchi to direct. And in 2016, he gave Toho his proposal, along with some concept art for the film. But the project didn't really go anywhere. This was partially in due to Toho wanting to make their own cinematic universe. And because Shin Godzilla was so different, they probably didn't want to create a cinematic universe centered around it. 
Also, there was a deal in place that Toho couldn't release a theatrical live-action Godzilla film until after GVK, so that didn't exactly help Shin Godzilla 2's chances. As to what the film's plot would have been about, we don't really know anything. Except it's been said that the film would have been for people who didn't like Shin Godzilla. So I imagine it would be more in line with classic Godzilla films, but that's just speculation on my part. Godzilla TV This is a partially lost Godzilla series that ran from October 1999 to March of 2000. It was a five minute long show that aired every weekday. And depending on the day, the episode's format would be different. Monday was Godzilla Theater, which would just show clips from the past Godzilla films. Tuesday was the Godzilla Expedition Team, in which a child reporter visits filming locations from the Godzilla franchise. Wednesday was Godzilla Laboratory, where comedians would answer Godzilla-related questions. Thursday was World of Godzilla, where children from around the world learn about Godzilla. And Friday was Breaking Godzilla 2000 News, where information, images, and cast interviews from Godzilla 2000 would be shown off. Yeah, this show was actually just made to promote Godzilla 2000. And because it was a promotional campaign for a movie, the show was never rebroadcasted or released on DVD, VHS, or anything. So like I said earlier, the show is partially lost. Godzilla and the Martians Released in 1984, this was an unlicensed Godzilla game created for the ZX Spectrum 16K 48K. The game has you playing as a random person climbing up a building to get to a girl by jumping over Martians. Meanwhile, Godzilla is just chilling out on top of the building with her. Yeah, you don't actually play as Godzilla in this unlicensed Godzilla game. The game's description reads, The Martians have invaded, destroying the molecular structure of Earth's atmosphere to make it compatible with their own planet. The girl of your dreams is trapped at the top of a building site, but for the moment protected from the evil invaders by a friendly dinosaur. Which is meant to be Godzilla, who I guess in this universe is still Godzillasaurus. You must rescue her before the oxygen is totally absorbed. Martians kill, so do the man traps which you must leap. Superhumans only can play this game. Yeah, if you're not a superhero, you can't actually play this game, unfortunately. Although, you can play a much better game called Donkey Kong, which this game is very clearly a ripoff of. Scrapped Final Wars Kaiju At the time of its release, Final Wars featured pretty much every single Godzilla monster. Well, most of them. There were actually four kaiju scrapped from the film. Originally, Gorosaurus, Mechagodzilla, King Ghidorah, and the giant octopus were going to be in the film. King Ghidorah was replaced with Monster X, aka Kaiser Ghidorah, while Gorosaurus was replaced with Zilla. While Mechagodzilla and the giant octopus were both scrapped with no replacements. Last thing I'll mention is that in December 2004, an interview was held with Shogo Tomiyama, and in response to being asked if they considered a rematch between Godzilla and King Kong for Final Wars, he responded saying, quote, The rights for Kong weren't available. So it's possible that Kong was at one point considered for the film. Shin Godzilla VR Everyone complains about how there hasn't been a console Godzilla game since 2014. Well, in actuality, we have gotten one since 2014. In 2016, a VR game titled Shin Godzilla Special Demo Contents was released exclusively on the PlayStation VR. The game has you playing as just a random dude, just chilling out in the ruins of Tokyo, when you see Shin Godzilla slowly walking towards you. Instead of running away, you just sit there and watch as Shin Godzilla stomps towards you, causing rocks to be flung at you. And eventually, you die. And that's the end of the game. If you could call that a game. Okay, so it's not really what people want with a console Godzilla game. And it can be completed in just under two minutes. If you want to play this game, I don't think you actually can. As it was released exclusively in Japan, 
and I'm pretty sure it's been delisted by now. Godzilla vs. Kamakiris Originally, instead of GMK, the 25th Godzilla film was going to be Godzilla vs. Kamakiris. This idea was quickly scrapped, however, as the previous Godzilla film, Godzilla vs. Megagirus, also focused on an insect like Kaiju. The film would have been directed by Shusuke Kaneko. And that's pretty much all we know about this film. Original Ebera, Horror of the Deep The original version of Ebera, Horror of the Deep was titled Operation Robinson Crusoe, King Kong vs. Ebera in which, yes, King Kong would star in the film instead of Godzilla. This explains why in the film we got, Godzilla acts at a character so much. For instance, he gets strength from electricity, which is something that King Kong did in King Kong vs. Godzilla. This also explains why Godzilla had an attraction to a human woman. So why did they get rid of King Kong and replace him with Godzilla? Well, Rankin Bass Productions, who had given Toho the license for King Kong, had given them the license so that they would make a tie-in film with their cartoon, The King Kong Show. And Operation Robinson Crusoe was meant to be that film. However, Rankin Bass felt the movie didn't follow the show closely enough, so Toho instead replaced King Kong with Godzilla and the Toho King Kong movie would eventually become King Kong Escapes. Transforming Bullet Train Robot Shinkelion Transforming Bullet Train Robot Shinkelion is an anime series based on the model train franchise of the same name. In the show, monsters begin attacking the world, so a bunch of kids piloting mechs that can turn into trains join forces to save the world. It's your standard Saturday morning mecha anime. But what's notable about this series is that in the 2019 film, Transforming Bullet Train Robot Shinkelion the movie, The Marvelous Fast Alpha X That Comes From The Future, what, a, what an absolute mouthful, one of the show's characters actually battles Godzilla. This Godzilla has been dubbed as Snow Godzilla by most fans, and features an original design for the film. Godzilla even meets a train version of Ava Unit 1, piloted by Shinji from Evangel... What? Shinji from Evangelion? Wait, Asuka and Rei are here too? There's a monster that's just a combination of all the angels from Evangelion? Misato also appears in the series? And Hatsune Miku's here too? What the hell is this series? Cancelled NES Rodan Game in 1990, there was an ad in Nintendo Power that said that a Rodan game was coming to the Nintendo Entertainment System. The game was advertised for about a year, where it was described as being a semi-sequel to the NES Godzilla game. However, this game would never come out, as the game was cancelled because Toho felt that a game under Rodan's name wouldn't sell as well as a Godzilla game. And so, most of the NES Rodan game's assets were used in the video game Godzilla 2 – War of the Monsters. Godzilla Zero In March of 2022, Twitter user Razorkey revealed on Twitter that they had been filmed as an extra in a film titled Godzilla Zero. However, no film titled Godzilla Zero has ever been released. So what was this tweet talking about? Well, filming for Godzilla Minus One did occur in early 2022, with it being known at the time as Blockbuster Monster Movie. So while it's never been confirmed, it's very likely that Godzilla Zero was the original title for Minus One, or at the very least, a placeholder title. Hedora vs. Medora After the release of Godzilla vs. Hedora, Director Yoshimitsu Bano tried convincing Toho to make another film with Hedora in it. For example, he proposed Godzilla vs. Hedora 2, where Godzilla would battle a second Hedora in Africa. However, this film would never happen. Decades later, he would try one more time to make a film with Hedora in it, where he'd ask Godzilla fans from across the globe to help him create a new film, titled Hedora vs. Medora, 
where Hidora would battle a green version of himself named Midora, who was trying to save the environment. And maybe this film could have happened. But tragically, on May 7th, 2017, Bono would pass away at the age of 86. And so Hidora vs. Medora will more than likely never be made. Singular Point Season 2 Originally assumed to be a one-and-done series, Godzilla Singular Point ends on a cliffhanger revealing Mechagodzilla. Or Robo-Godzilla, but I'm gonna call him Mechagodzilla. So fans waited for a second season to be announced. And waited. And waited. And waited. Yeah, it's currently April of 2024, and there hasn't been any indication that a second season will be happening. The closest we've gotten to news on a second season was in July of 2023, when a fan on Twitter asked the show's writer, Toe and Joe, if there would be a second season. To which he responded, quote, Due to the contract, all I can say is, there may or may not be a next season. So, not really an answer, but I guess it's better than nothing. Godzilla vs. Bambi Godzilla vs. Bambi is a 1969 animated short film created entirely by Marv Newland. The short film is only 1 minute and 30 seconds long, and it tells the story of Bambi, who's just chilling out eating some grass, when suddenly, Godzilla shows up and stomps on him, killing Bambi instantly. The narrator of the film then thanks Tokyo for their help in obtaining Godzilla for the film, and that's where it ends. The short film received critical acclaim, and would even be included on the VHS release of Godzilla 1985. There were also two sequels to the short, one in 1976 called Bambi's Revenge, where it's revealed that Bambi is alive and he blows up Godzilla's foot with some dynamite, causing Godzilla to bounce away. And finally, Son of Bambi Meets Godzilla, released in 1999, where Godzilla 1998 tries to kill the Son of Bambi, but keeps failing until Bambi pulls out a missile launcher and kills him. Monsterverse Prequel Film In 2019, Michael Doherty discussed creating a Monsterverse Ray Harryhausen-esque prequel film set in prehistoric times. The film would be about how primitive humans survived against Titans, and would feature Godzilla's first meeting with humanity. He described the film by saying, quote, it would be very ambitious. I think ambitious in that Mad Max Fury Road way. I think it's totally possible to do that with the absolute minimum amount of human characters, and really characterize the creatures. Despite a large amount of fan interest, there hasn't been any updates on this proposed prequel film. So it's probably not going to happen. Commodore Plus 4 Godzilla for the Commodore Plus 4 is an unlicensed Godzilla game released in Hungary. Released in 1988, the game was an endless runner, where you play as Godzilla, who looks like a T-Rex, running through a graveyard being attacked by UFOs. Unlike other endless runners, Godzilla can actually attack his enemies by using fire breath or chomping down on the UFOs. The most infamous thing about this game is that the game doesn't feature any audio during gameplay. Well, until Godzilla hits an object, and then it makes this sound. Shin Godzilla's First Appearance So you might think that Shin Godzilla's first on-screen appearance was in his own film. Well, in actuality, that's not the case. His first appearance was in episode 901 of Cran Shinchan, a show that began airing in 1992. The show is a slice of life comedy series and is extremely popular in Japan. Shin Godzilla's appearance was in the segment titled It's Crayon Shinchan vs. Shin Godzilla, where the two characters battle to the death. And by death, I mean Shin-Chan jumps into Shin Godzilla's mouth and farts into it, shrinking Godzilla down to the size of a small lizard. 
so a fate worse than death. Because this was made in promotion for Shin Godzilla, they actually changed some things about Shin Godzilla. For example, in Shin Shan, he fires blue atomic breath instead of the purple beam from the film. Godzilla vs. Red Moon In the early 1970s, a new Godzilla film was being developed titled Godzilla vs. Red Moon. The film would be primarily about new kaiju one named Red Moon, and the other, Urubus. Both of these kaiju came from the moon. The Japanese self-defense force is just like, all right, we know the drill. Let's lead the two kaiju to each other and have them fight each other to the death. And so they do that. But instead of fighting, the two kaiju begin to bang. And almost immediately after banging, Urubus gives birth to a new kaiju, Halfun. Halfun is then kidnapped by some people trying to make money off of the baby kaiju. However, in the process of being kidnapped, Halfun dies. This, of course, causes Red Moon and Erebus to go ballistic, and so the monsters begin attacking Okinawa. Godzilla then finally shows up during the final act, and battles both the kaiju. Right before he's about to kill Red Moon, a child strolls in and tells Godzilla to spare them. Godzilla, basically being a kaiju superhero at this point, listens to the kid and leaves. Red Moon then flies back to the moon, and the film ends. This film was going to be a collaboration between Toho and Tsuburaya Productions. However, for whatever reason, the film was cancelled, and the plot was reworked into the 1972 film Diagora vs. Goliath. At least, that's what some sources say. Other sources claim this isn't true. But what is true is that this film didn't happen. Godzilla Online Godzilla Online was a multiplayer game created by Mythic Entertainment in 1998 that took place shortly after the events of the 1998 film. The game has you taking the role of one of four classes with their own objectives. First, there's the soldier, who comes with assault rifles and rocket launchers, and their main goal is to kill as many baby Godzillas as possible. There's the scientist class, whose main goal is to take blood samples from baby Godzillas, and wields futuristic weapons to battle against the soldiers trying to kill them. Then there's the baby Godzillas, whose goal is to slaughter pretty much everyone who's not a baby Godzilla. And finally, there's the reporter class, that doesn't actually fight, but instead just watches the fight, and you have to avoid being killed by any of the three other classes. The game had five multiplayer maps and five game modes. You had your standard free-for-all, team deathmatch, and capture the flag. The two other modes were Escape from New York City, where you had to kill all the baby Godzillas before they could escape, and Last Man, which was a free-for-all with limited lives. Monster Planet of Godzilla Monster Planet of Godzilla was an attraction at select theme parks in Japan from 1994 to 1998, and featured Godzilla, Rodan, and Mothra battling it out. It was a fairly simple simulation ride with some fun dialogue and effects, but what's really notable about this ride is that a decent chunk of it is lost. This short was released as a bonus feature for the Japanese exclusive Godzilla Final Box Set and the five disc Blu ray of the 2014 film. But a certain character has been removed from the film. Who is this mysterious character? Well, it's Hello Kitty. You see, one of the theme parks the ride was at was Harmony Land, whose mascot is Hello Kitty. So they filmed the scenes where Hello Kitty would help out during the fight by flying in in a fighter jet. Because of licensing issues, every single scene with Hello Kitty has been removed from the home release of the short, making all of her scenes lost media. PUBG Mobile In May of 2021, an event was held in PUBG Mobile that crossed over the Battle Royale game with the MonsterVerse. This crossover came with a bunch of unique skins based on the Titans from the MonsterVerse, 
But the most notable thing about this collab was the fact that Godzilla, Kong, and a Skullcrawler were added to the Battle Royale map, where they'd walk around and kill players that came near them. A limited time game mode was also added to the game, where you and other players help out Godzilla and Kong battle Mechagodzilla in the Pacific Ocean. They even released a comic adaptation of this limited time game mode. Lost in Time In Godzilla King of the Monsters issue 9, released in March of 1996 by Dark Horse Comics, and written by Alex Cox, Godzilla is sent through time by the scientist Professor Mason, not in an attempt to stop Godzilla, but instead to have Godzilla alter the course of history. And so Godzilla is sent through time and ends up appearing at certain historical moments, like Pompeii, the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, the Titanic, and the 1588 Spanish Armada. In order to prevent Godzilla from altering the course of history, G-Force travels through time to stop Godzilla. The story lasts from issue 9 to issue 12, and yes, features Godzilla attacking the Titanic, which is an insane scenario. Giant monsters converge on Okinawa, showdown in Zampamisaki. Written by Shinichi Sakizawa and Jun Fukuda in 1973, Giant Monsters Converge on Okinawa is a cancelled Godzilla film about Godzilla, Mothra, and Anguirus joining forces to take on an alien army consisting of the Garuga aliens and their giant robot monster, Garugan. Why were these aliens trying to take over the world? Well, their plan was to conquer Earth and then sell it to another alien race, presumably to either enslave humanity or just to have a new planet to live on. The film would receive a rewrite, which would take Mothra out of the film, and replaced her with a new kaiju named King Balgan. Garugan was also removed from the story, and replaced with Mechagodzilla. Also, Gigan was thrown into the story, because why not? Any story becomes better when you add a Gigan. This version of the film didn't last too long in development, as it would be scrapped and reworked into Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, with King Caesar replacing King Balgan, and the Black Hole aliens replacing the Garuga aliens. Godzilla's loose. Ah! He's gonna eat these commercials! The humanity of it all! Calm him, Cartoon Network! Soothe the beast! Godzilla, king of all thunder lizards, shall return. He's going to stuff his face with Smurfs again. You're going to get fat, Godzilla. Monarch G Team. In November of 2022, Actor O'Shea Jackson Jr., who played Barnes in King of the Monsters, revealed that he, along with Chris Mirjahangnir, from the website Toho Kingdom, had pitched an anime-inspired series set in the Monsterverse, titled Monarch G-Team. The series would focus on Monarch, specifically G-Team, dealing with various titans from across the globe. From new kaiju to old Toho classics, like Biolanti, Kabunga, and Gigan. The show would also ideally last three seasons. While revealed in 2022, the series has resurfaced very recently, due to the success of Godzilla x Kong. So if you want this series to be made, go tweet at Legendary's Twitter account, asking them for it. Also, share around posts talking about the show. Tokyo is a fine place. In the 1957 Toho film, Tokyo is a Fine Place, there's a baseball team called the Tokyo Angiris, and the team's uniform even includes a shoulder patch with Angiris' head. Some have theorized that this film actually takes place in the Showa Godzilla universe, 
with the idea that the team named themselves after the fallen Anguirus from Godzilla Raids Again. But that's just a fan theory. I'm pretty sure this was just meant to be an easter egg, nothing more. Star Godzilla Star Godzilla is a cancelled 1980 Godzilla film that was going to be produced by first distributors, and was announced in an issue of Variety, with this poster featuring Godzilla, King Kong, and Anguirus battling UFOs and military vehicles. Weirdly enough, the poster actually uses art lifted from ads from the 1976 King Kong film. However, first distributors didn't actually get the rights to use any of these characters. So Toho threatened legal action, which led to the film's cancellation. This film would also receive a fake review released on April 1st of 1998, as an April Fool's Day joke by Stomp Tokyo Video Reviews, where they used screenshots from the 1986 film One Crazy Summer and a doctored image from the 1975 film Inframan to represent the film. Godzilla vs. Deep Sea Life This is a cancelled Godzilla film that would have served as the final entry to the Heisei era. All we know about this cancelled film is that Godzilla would have battled a new dragon-like kaiju that came from the ocean, and both Godzilla and this dragon kaiju would be attacked by G-Force with the Oxygen Destroyer. Mecha Mothra Originally, the ending to Godzilla vs. Mothra would have had Mothra being killed by Godzilla. This would have led to a cancelled sequel that would have had Mothra coming back to life as a cyborg, and she'd look more like a dragonfly than a moth. Sadly, that's all we know about this film. The American Version of Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Godzilla Great Monster Battle was a 2D fighting game released for the Super Famicom in 1994, and was a sequel to Godzilla Battle Legends. Because of its positive reception, Toho announced an American version of the game, titled Godzilla Destroy All Monsters, that was set to be released in April of 1995. However, this never ended up happening. This is extremely strange, because in the May 1995 issue of Nintendo Power, there was actually a review of the game, so it's clear that an American version of the game does exist somewhere but nobody knows why it wasn't released. Vishnu Vishnu, aka a strange dead monster, was the original design for the Muto. Its only appearance was in the 2012 San Diego Comic-Con teaser for Godzilla 2014, and it got its name from the teaser's narration saying, Vishnu takes on his multi-arm form as the camera then pans to the monster's corpse. Vishnu would then appear in the Godzilla 2014 art book, where they were finally given a somewhat official name. A strange, dead monster. Eternal Linkage Eternal Linkage is a Japanese-exclusive fantasy mobile RPG developed by Jupit. Because the game was shut down, the game has fallen into obscurity. The most well-known thing about the game is that it featured a crossover event with Shin Godzilla and the Godzilla anime trilogy, where Godzilla Earth, Mothra, Shin Godzilla, and several Servums show up alongside the cast of the anime trilogy. Godzilla vs. Ghost Godzilla Godzilla vs. Ghost Godzilla is yet again another cancelled final entry to the Heisei era. This time around, Godzilla would battle the ghost of the original Godzilla from the 1954 film, who would eventually possess Godzilla Jr., causing him to grow into a reincarnation of the 1954 Godzilla. Anguirus was also intended to be in this film. There was even a draft of the film in which Ghost Godzilla would possess Anguirus, creating a new monster called Godzirus. There was even another draft where Ghost Godzilla would possess a new kaiju, named Baragurus, who was basically just a combination of Anguirus and Baragon. Ultimately, this film was cancelled for multiple reasons, 
with the main one being that Toho felt making a third Godzilla film in a row, where Godzilla battles a clone or variant of himself, would be a little bit much. Lost Gamera and Godzilla Fight For 10 days during March 1970, Gamera battled several kaiju at Expo 70 as a promotion for the film Gamera vs. Jiger, which was released that month. And that film was also a promotion for Expo 70, so it was like a circle of promotion. Anyways, one of the kaiju that Gamera battled during the Expo was Godzilla, which means, yes, an official Godzilla and Gamera fight took place at a children's event during Expo 70, and it's lost to time. Very little footage actually exists of this event. Though we know that Godzilla and Gamera were joined by Gorosaurus, Jiger, Manila, and Space Gauss. Tokyo 1960 In 1957, an edited version of the original Godzilla film was released in the Philippines, with the title Tokyo 1960, with new scenes added in with Filipino actors. However, no footage of this version of the film has ever surfaced and because of the humidity and heat in the Philippines destroying most of the country's early physical films, it's unlikely that footage of this film will ever surface, because it's probably destroyed. Resurrection of Godzilla King of Monsters, Resurrection of Godzilla was a cancelled Godzilla film from 1977. This film would have been directed by Jun Fukuda. The film would begin with a Shakaris attacking some Japanese sailors. Shakaris, along with Godzilla, who shows up later, were attracted to the area due to nuclear energy being dumped illegally. But it's not just the kaiju that Japan has to deal with. As a group of terrorists take over the nuclear power plant the energy was being dumped from, the terrorists plan on making their own nuclear bomb to use on Japan to remind the country of the horrors of nuclear warfare. But they get stopped by Godzilla, who shows up and causes some chaos, destroying the nearby Hamamatsu city. He then heads over to the nuclear power plant and destroys it. The film ends with Godzilla battling the Japanese Self-Defense Force, along with the United States Navy and the Soviet Union's Navy. The US then drops a nuclear bomb on Godzilla, which they think kills the kaiju. The film's protagonist states, Godzilla is a monster and not a living thing. As long as nuclear weapons exist in the world, it won't die. And the film ends on a bleak note, as a few months later, Godzilla is seen re-emerging and attacks a nuclear power plant in California. While the film would be scrapped, Elements of its plot would be reused in Godzilla 1985. 1999 King Ghidorah Film A King Ghidorah solo film was planned for a 1999 release. All we know about this film is that it wouldn't be connected to the Heisei era, the upcoming Millennium era, or the Rebirth of Mothra trilogy. It would be its own standalone film in its own continuity. However, the film would be cancelled, and Toho just decided to incorporate Ghidorah into Rebirth of Mothra 3 instead. Outpost Easter Eggs The names of the outposts in the MonsterVerse are usually references to previous Godzilla films or monster films in general. For example, Tiamat was monitored at Outpost 53, which was named after the year The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms was released. King Ghidorah was monitored at Outpost 32, which was named after a similarly named outpost in John Carpenter's The Thing, Outpost 31. Rodan was monitored at Outpost 56, a reference to the year his debut film was released. Celia was monitored at Outpost 55, which is a reference to the 1955 film Tarantula. Mothra was monitored at Outpost 61, which is a reference to the year her debut film was released. Kong was monitored at Outpost 33, which is a reference to his debut film in 1933. And finally, the monarch outpost that monitored Godzilla was Outpost 54, which is a reference to the year his debut film was released. 
1988 animated Godzilla film. In the late 1980s, it was reported by Variety that Toho was planning production on an animated Godzilla film set for release in 1988. This was because Toho felt that a quote, state-of-the-art live-action Godzilla film would be far too expensive to produce. Pre- and post-production on the film would be done in the United States, while the animation would be done in Japan. Sadly, the film would never end up being made, and the only plot details we have about this film come from an article titled, Godzilla's American Cousin, written in the 45th issue of Film Facts. The article revealed that the film would have had Godzilla battling against one of the Gargantuans from the 1966 film, War of the Gargantuans. Lyoplorodon. In Godzilla Tokyo SOS, a corpse of Kamibes appears, revealing that Godzilla had killed him right before the beginning of the movie. Well, originally, that wasn't going to be a Kamibes, but a Lyoplorodon which isn't really a kaiju, but instead a real-life prehistoric creature that lived in the Jurassic period. However, Toho wanted a recognizable kaiju to be that corpse. So it was decided that the corpse would be Angiris, but the film's producer, Shogo Tomiyama, really didn't want that, because he wanted to use Angiris in a potential sequel. So Tokyo SOS's director, Masaki Tezuka, requested Gamera be the corpse. But Toho responded saying, We don't have the rights to Gamera. But we do have Kamibis. And so, Kamibis became the corpse. Wolfman vs. Godzilla Wolfman vs. Godzilla is a Godzilla fan film that started production in 1983 and has technically never ended. Filming for the project was completed in 1985, but for whatever reason, the film has never been completed. According to Shizu Nakajima, the film's director, who was also a production assistant on Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla and Terror of Mechagodzilla, there exists roughly 10 hours of raw footage for the film. As for the film's plot, we know that it's about a werewolf that grows to kaiju size after becoming irradiated, and eventually battles Godzilla. At G-Fest 2012, a montage of effects for the film and behind-the-scenes photos were shown off. And for a while, this was the closest anyone got to seeing the film. However, in February of 2023, YouTube user Steven Sloss did the unthinkable. He released 22 minutes of footage of Wolfman vs. Godzilla. The footage uploaded was an edit made in 2013, and is very clearly not finished. This is, as of right now, the closest we've ever gotten to seeing the full film. Monsterverse Video Game In 2022, it was announced that Legendary had partnered with video game developer Seven Levels to create a video game set in the MonsterVerse. The game's official description was revealed as, quote, Set after the events of Godzilla vs. Kong, players exploit the strength of the Titans to traverse a crumbling metropolis in the trails of unraveling a huge mystery tied into the MonsterVerse franchise. And after that announcement, there was nothing. That was until fall of 2023, where the video game was described as, quote, The events of the game will take place shortly from the aftermath of Godzilla vs. Kong. The player will have to survive in the desolation of a ruined city. For this, they will use, among other things, the colossal strength of the Titans. The title will combine the genres of action, adventure, and platform games, and the whole thing will be enriched with a realistic audio-visual setting. As of right now, there isn't anything else known about this game, but I'm sure within a year, we'll get our first look at it. Or maybe it'll be cancelled, who knows. Cancelled Godzilla 1998 Cartoon Toy Line while the marketing for the 1998 Godzilla film was massive, 
the marketing for its sequel cartoon barely existed at all. Godzilla 1998 also had various figures and toys made for the film, but the cartoon series had very little, if any, toys ever released. But it was supposed to. So why weren't these toys ever released? Well, it's because Walmart didn't want them released. As they made a decision not to sell any more Godzilla toys after the first wave of 1998 figures were released. However, the Godzilla 1998 cartoon series figures were still prototyped, so they held a contest with the animated series' toys as prizes. So basically, the entire toy line was cancelled because Walmart was like, Nah, we're good. Shin Arima In 2016, a crossover browser game between Shin Godzilla and the Arima Kidin horse racing event was released. The game had you racing horses, all while Shin Godzilla tries to stop you by throwing rubble at you, trying to hit you with its tail, or just flat out stomping on you. If you were able to beat Shin Godzilla in all of the races, you would end up killing Shin Godzilla by pumping blood freezing coolagent into his body, like in the movie. So, yes, Shin Godzilla battled some random horse racers and lost. Also, there's various other animals involved in this race, like lions, giraffes, gorillas, and pandas. If you want to play this game, too bad, as the game is actually lost to media. Godzilla vs. the Space Monsters Earth Defense Directive This is a scrapped Godzilla film that was in development in 1971 with a planned release for 1972. The film is notable because it was supposed to be Megalon's first appearance. The film would be about Godzilla and Anguirus teaming up with a giant stone statue kaiju called Majin Tuol to battle Gigan, King Ghidorah, and Megalon, with the latter three kaiju being controlled by an alien brain named Miko. Majin would be revealed to have a rivalry with King Ghidorah, as King Ghidorah apparently attacked the statue's home hundreds of years ago. The final battle would take place in Science Land, a theme park with a giant Godzilla statue that Gigan would actually mistake for the real Godzilla. The film would end with Godzilla killing Miko, while the three evil kaiju retreat into space. While cancelled, the film would evolve into Godzilla vs. Gigan and Godzilla vs. Megalon. Phosphira Phosphira is a scrapped kaiju from Godzilla x Kong, although scrapped might not be the right word. Phosphira's existence was leaked months before GXK's release, and it was said that Phosphira was going to be the kaiju who convinced Godzilla to work with Kong. However, because of negative audience reactions, Phosphira was removed from the film and replaced with Mothra. And that was the story for quite a while. Until shortly after the film's release, when director Adam Wingard came out and confirmed that while Phosphira was in the film at one point, the story of her removal wasn't true. He said, quote, There was briefly another character called Phosphira that we had in place of Mothra, but Mothra was always what the character was written around. And there's this false narrative online that this other character tested badly. And then we were like, let's get Mothra. The plan was always Mothra, but we weren't sure if we were going to be able to get Mothra. And once we tested the movie, we had the previous version of that. And by then, things had cleared up, and we were able to do Mothra. Phosphira actually still appears in the film, however, as she appears in a mural sculpted into a temple. So she's still canon. 1977 Italian Cut In 1977, an Italian version of the original Godzilla film was released in Italy. This version of the film only came to be because of a man named Luigi Cozzi, who loved Godzilla 1954 when he was a child. And by 1977, he had become a pretty popular film distributor and producer in Italy. 
one of his favorite things to do was to purchase old sci-fi movies and play them in local movie theaters. Luigi decided to create his own Godzilla film after King Kong 1976 reignited interest in kaiju films in Italy. So Luigi got a negative print of the American cuts of Godzilla and tried to colorize it, which didn't really work. He had his own way of colorizing films at the time, and it didn't turn out very well, but color wasn't the only thing he added to the film. You see, Godzilla is one hour and 20 minutes long, but films in Italy at the time were normally an hour and 30 minutes long, so Luigi needed to come up with 10 more minutes of footage. So he took footage from Godzilla Raids Again, The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, The Day the Earth Caught Fire, and real news footage from the bombings of Hiroshima that had real dead bodies in it. Luigi also added in a brand new soundtrack for the film. Despite supplying Luigi with the American version of Godzilla, Toho has never acknowledged the 1977 Italian cut's existence. Dream Challenge – Godzilla Appears in Sukagawa Directed by Kenji Suzuki, Dream Challenge – Godzilla Appears in Sukagawa is a 14-minute long short film released in 2019 exclusively at the AG Superaya Museum. The film features Godzilla battling laser technology built by the JSDF in Sukagawa. Because this film is only available to view in one place, it could potentially become lost media in the future, but as of right now, it's just rare media. Godzilla Micro Battle Playsets During the 1990s, Trend Masters released seven different micro battle playsets for Godzilla. These toys were small battleground playsets inside of Godzilla's head. You open up Godzilla's head, and boom, now you've got a mini Los Angeles, San Francisco, and New York City to destroy. You've even got landmarks you can destroy, like the Golden Gate Bridge, the Empire State Building, the Statue of Liberty, the Washington Monument, and the Twin Towers. Yeah, this toy didn't really age well. Anyways, it didn't just stop with Godzilla, because two of these sets were held in different heads, like Mecha King Ghidorah's body and Mecha Godzilla 2's head. There was also a Space Godzilla playset planned, but it was cancelled. The sets came with tiny versions of Godzilla, Rodan, Mecha Godzilla, etc., and you could use your imagination to destroy all kinds of things, like the Pentagon, the White House, the Capitol Building, the Twin Tower. Go Godman. Go Godman was a show that ran from October of 1972 to September of 1973, and ran for 156 episodes. And like Zone Fighter, Godman actually shares continuity with the Showa era of Godzilla. Except not really, it doesn't actually. The show simply reuses monsters from the Showa era of Godzilla. While Godzilla doesn't appear in the show, Gabara and Gorosaurus do. Gorosaurus ends up being killed in Godman, but Gabara manages to survive and appears in the sequel series Go Green Man. Go Green Man lasted for 52 episodes and aired from 1973 to 1974. In this sequel series, the superhero Green Man battles and ends up killing Gabara after Gabara eats a child. No, seriously, Gabara eats a kid. But what's even stranger is that in Go Green Man, Green Man battles an evil version of Manila. And this evil version of Manila is in Japan to obtain the blood of small children. Green Man couldn't even bring himself to kill Manila. But don't worry, evil Manila was then executed by his master for failing to obtain the blood of children. One final note is that every single suit featured in the show that was a returning kaiju, like Gorosaurus, Manila, and Gabara, were heavily damaged beyond repair so they all look pretty bad in the show. Chibi Godzilla 
Chibi Godzilla is a sub-series in the Godzilla franchise that's aimed directly at very young children. The series consists of various books, a web anime, merchandise, an anime, and music. There are even meet and greets where children can meet Chibi Godzilla. Chibi Godzilla features the Tiny Godzilla along with various other tiny kaiju, like Mechagodzilla, Mothra, Hidora, King Ghidorah, Violante, Rodan, Gigan, etc. Despite having two different shows, these shows are not in the same continuity. The web anime, released from July of 2020 to February of 2021, followed Chibi Godzilla as he lived with a human woman named Satomi. As for the televised anime, Chibi Godzilla Raids Again, which began airing in June 2023 and is still airing to this day, Chibi Godzilla lives on Monster Island. Also, in this series, Chibi Godzilla is the real Godzilla's son. Overall, it's a very popular children's series in Japan. Batholith vs. Methuselah Have you noticed how out of all the new kaiju shown at the end of King of the Monsters, the only one who hasn't done anything since the film's release is Methuselah. Celia appears in various comics, and even returns in Godzilla x Kong, and Behemoth has appeared in various comics as well, and was meant to have a cameo in Godzilla vs Kong. Sure, the Queen Mudo hasn't done anything, but she's barely a new kaiju. Methuselah hasn't appeared in any new media released after 2019, besides a drawing of him showing up at the beginning of Godzilla Dominion. So why is that? Well, this is a bit of speculation, but it might be because Methuselah is a controversial titan. In December of 2021, artist Jeremy Allen Souls sued Legendary because he claimed that Legendary had copied the design of Methuselah from a kaiju called Batholith, who is owned by Summit Kaiju International. This kaiju was even shown off at G-Fest 2017, and admittedly, he does look like Methuselah. So it's possible that Methuselah is being ignored due to potential legal problems. To back up this claim, in Godzilla x Kong's credits, Jeremy Allen Souls is thanked. Once again, this is all speculation, but there was a lawsuit about the character. Here's a makeup tip from Godzilla. To make a prominent nose look smaller, paint your eyes up to look bigger. Thanks, Godzilla! Oh no! There goes Cartoon Network! Go, go, Godzilla! Yeah, yeah! The 80th Academy Awards For the 80th Academy Awards, hosted in 2008, a montage of characters from different movies living in New York City together was played. For some reason, Zilla, or Godzilla 1998, appears in this montage, and actually battles King Kong from Peter Jackson's King Kong. King Kong in a Jet Jaguar suit When Godzilla vs. Megalon was being marketed in Germany, Jet Jaguar was marketed under the name King Kong, in order to draw in a larger crowd. And since then, this has led many people to believe that the German dub of the movie claimed that Jet Jaguar was actually just King Kong in a robot suit. Though this is actually not true, as the German dub never mentions King Kong being in a robot suit. Biolanti King Ghidorah Hybrid in the Godzilla comic Raids Again, there's a story in which King Ghidorah is sent to attack Earth, but is stopped before getting to Earth by Biolanti, who is living in space debris orbiting the Earth. The two kaiju battle it out, which leads to Biolanti absorbing Ghidorah's power and becomes a Biolanti King Ghidorah hybrid that continues the fight against King Ghidorah. Though even in this ultra powerful form, King Ghidorah was still able to defeat this abomination. 
Giant Serizawa. For some reason, in the Dreamcast game, Godzilla Generations, you can unlock and play as a giant kaiju-sized version of Dr. Serizawa from Godzilla 1954. In order to unlock him, you need to complete the game as all other kaiju. He only has two attacks, a laser cannon that extends from his eye patch, and the oxygen destroyer, which unleashes lightning in every direction. He can also recover health by kneeling, which causes a ray of heavenly light to shine upon him. So I guess the in-universe explanation is that Dr. Serizawa is getting powers from heaven to do whatever on Earth. Kinda strange, but it's not the strangest thing in the franchise. Lost King of the Monsters footage. Screen X is a type of movie theater that has footage surrounding the audience viewing the film. And because Godzilla King of the Monsters was screened in some of these theaters, the footage that is displayed on the sides of the theater room are actually lost, since you can't really port that footage to a home release. Now you might be like, oh, it's just some footage of destroyed buildings or whatever. Who cares? And, uh... Well, maybe it is, but it's still somewhat important. As the film featured a record-breaking 50 minutes of panoramic footage. So that's 50 minutes of destroyed buildings that we'll never see. The Millennium Era was never meant to happen. After Godzilla vs. Destroya in 1995, Toho intended for the Godzilla franchise to go on a hiatus for a decade. So the next entry would be released in 2005. However, after the release of Godzilla 1998, Toho decided to bring Godzilla out of retirement early due to the backlash and disappointment caused for the 1998 film. And so the Godzilla franchise continued from 1999 to 2004. So next time you make fun of Godzilla 1998, just remember, if that film didn't happen, we would have never got in Final Wars, GMK, the Kiru Saga, Godzilla 2000's design, and this. Do you really want to live in a world without Millennium Baragon? I didn't think so. Godzilla Forever Godzilla Forever is a cancelled American Godzilla film from the late 2000s. Written by Gary Whitta, the film would have taken place in the near future, and uh, that's pretty much all we know about it. Its existence was revealed in February of 2022, when Whitta posted about the film on Twitter, revealing a page of the film's proposal. Sadly, this page doesn't really tell us anything, outside of Godzilla having a history in-universe, and attacking cities across the globe, before being mortally wounded, forcing him into hiding. Gamera in the Monsterverse So I previously discussed all the scrapped kaiju from King of the Monsters, like Gigan. However, that's not entirely true, as I actually saved one for his own entry. Strangely, one of the kaiju that was included in the film's concept art was Gamera, which is extremely strange, because not only was Gamera not licensed to Legendary, but he's not even owned by Toho. This has led some people to believe that Gamera was intended to be in King of the Monsters at one point. However, I don't think that's the case. Instead, I think he was just added to concept art either for fun or just as a placeholder. Godzilla Land Adventure Godzilla Land is a lost Godzilla show used to promote Godzilla vs. Mothra and Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. The show ran from October of 1992 to December of 1993, and lasted 26 episodes. This piece of lost media is most well known for two things, the first being that this show was actually the origin of Chibi Godzilla, and would go on to star in his own get-going Godzilla Land OVAs. But the show is also well known for this footage of Godzilla and Mechagodzilla 2 beating the crap out of each other in a newsroom. In fact, the episode that this footage comes from is actually the only found episode of the show, 
Sadly, because this was a promotional show, Toho didn't really feel the need to archive it or release it on VHS or DVD or whatever. King Godzilla King Godzilla is a chimera hybrid between four kaiju, Godzilla, King Ghidorah, Biollante, and Batra. He's got King Ghidorah's legs, Batra's brain and wings, he's got Biollante's head inside of his chest that can spit out acid, and obviously, as you can see, he's got King Ghidorah's heads as his arms. Only appearing in the manga Godzilla King of the Monsters in 1993, this King of Abominations battled Godzilla alongside a mech named Machine G. The battle came to an end when all three kaiju fell into a volcano and died. Zilla's Privates For some terrible reason, Godzilla 1998 monster designer Patrick Tatopoulos revealed to the film's commentary that he had actually sculpted female genitalia onto Godzilla's CGI model, though apparently it's not completely visible in the film. So yeah, Godzilla 1998 has a vagina. Despite being a lizard. Not really happy that I know about this, and I'm sure you're not either. Godzilla Great Naval Battle Written by Yosuke Nakano, Godzilla Great Naval Battle was a scrapped Godzilla film meant to be the final installment of the Heisei era. The film would have seen Godzilla traveling to the Middle East due to the various warring countries in the area dropping nuclear weapons on each other. This would also mutate various creatures into kaiju, like an ammonite and a sea scorpion. Godzilla would then battle them and kill them in the ocean which is why the film is titled Great Naval Battle. But just as Godzilla thinks that he's beaten all the kaiju, a new foe would appear. This final kaiju would be a new Mechagodzilla created by G-Force. And this new Mechagodzilla was built for naval combat. So why didn't this film end up happening? Well, it hasn't been fully revealed, but Nakano has stated that he believes the film costed too much money to make. Godzilla Kingdom Godzilla Kingdom is a lost Godzilla series that ran from October of 1996 to August of 1997. The show was hosted by a woman just called Doctor and her kaiju friend Megabyte. The two would analyze data and stats about Godzilla and other kaiju. Basically, just think of Wikizilla videos but made in the late 1990s, and they're also only 5 minutes long. Godzilla Kingdom had 224 episodes, and all of them are lost. Unless somebody out there has all these episodes recorded, it doesn't seem like we'll ever see Megabyte again. Dagon A lot of people tend to forget that we actually know the name of another of Godzilla's species in the MonsterVerse. Dagon Dagon actually appears in Godzilla 2014, as the skeleton that Monarch walks through in the film. So uh, yeah, he is very much dead. Legendary would later give Dagon his own backstory in Godzilla Aftershock, written by Arvid Nelson, in which he's killed by Mudo Prime around the 11th century BC. Well, he wasn't really killed directly by Mudo Prime. He was defeated by Mudo Prime, but was able to escape her. But Mudo Prime had implanted Mudo eggs into Dagon, so... Uh, Dagon would end up dying. So I, I guess, actually, no, take that, take that back. Mudo Prime did directly kill Dagon. Godzilla vs. M Godzilla vs. M is a cancelled Godzilla film from 2001 that would have been directed by Shasuke Kanako. The film would be about an astronaut who is rescued from space after a strange accident left him orbiting Earth. A few days after being rescued, he would slowly begin to transform. He would then run off into the forests around Mount Fuji, because he didn't really want his daughter to see him, you know, transforming into a monster. Though despite this, she does eventually find him and sees him transforming. Godzilla then shows up to destroy Japan, but is then attacked by this new monster. Now going by the name M, M battles Godzilla twice, but is eventually killed. 
His daughter then gives up her life force to revive M. This not only revives M, but it gives him the strength to defeat Godzilla. M then carries him out to sea, where they both disappear forever. The film would have also taken place in an alternate timeline, where Japan would be known as the Republic of Japan and would be a highly militaristic country. Ultimately, this film never came to be because Kadoko believed that the film would be too dark to be released around New Year's. Godzilla Couple In 2014, a Japanese comic titled Big Comic Original released a special Godzilla issue in celebration of Godzilla 2014. Like the Godzilla comic, this manga was an anthology, and one of the stories was titled Godzilla Couple. Godzilla Couple tells the story of a couple who just want to bang, when Godzilla shows up to destroy their city. So they head to the nearest bunker. Just kidding, they actually continue to bang as Godzilla destroys everything around them. And when the destruction is over and Godzilla returns to the sea, the two decide to bang some more. And that's pretty much the entire plot. There's no twists or turns, it's just a couple banging, and the story will occasionally cut to Godzilla destroying stuff. Godzilla vs. Super Nuked Godzilla In 1995, Kairu Kamikiku submitted four drafts for a final installment of the Heisei era, and one of these drafts was called Godzilla vs. Super Nuked Godzilla. Outside of a single piece of concept art made for this film, there's not much else known about this film outside of its general synopsis. That being, Godzilla would battle a godzilla Osaurus who was mutated far beyond Godzilla's mutation, and the two would battle to the death in Vladikostok, Russia. Monster Warrior Godzilla Monster Warrior Godzilla is a story featured in the Godzilla comic. The story was created by suit actor Ryu Hurricane aka Hurricane Ryu, and tells the story of Godzilla and multiple other kaiju being from an alternate reality where they're all extremely humanoid. They're at war with humanity and are being hunted to extinction. Godzilla, who's taking some inspiration from Conan the Barbarian, leads his troops against the human menace. The story ends with Godzilla battling the Japanese Prime Minister, who has Mechagodzilla, Mechanikong, and Mogira defending him. Godzilla takes them all down, and then ascends back into his own reality. So yeah, it's a pretty crazy story. March 15th, 1977 airing of Godzilla vs. Megalon. So this sounds like a really spooky entry, although it's not at all. On March 15th, 1977, NBC decided to air Godzilla vs. Megalon on at prime time, so you might be wondering, what's so strange about that? Well, they put it in a one hour time slot, which meant that the film had to be heavily cut down from its hour and 21 minute runtime. And to make it even shorter, the film had bumpers hosted by John Belushi, who dressed up in a Godzilla costume. All footage of him doing whatever in that Godzilla suit has become lost to time, and so has this hour-long cut of Godzilla vs. Megalon. Gamera in Planet of the Monsters While never outright confirmed, it's actually hinted that Gamera exists in the Planet of the Monsters continuity, although he's dead. In the novel Monster Apocalypse, a body of a Kamibis washes ashore, a reference to the Turtle Kaiju's cameo in Tokyo SOS. However, scientists determine that this Kamibis corpse actually comes from a different species of Kamibis, like a subspecies. The Turtle Kaiju's body is described as being 60 meters long and missing his right hand. This is the exact same height as Gamera's Showa incarnation, and in the Heisei Gamera trilogy, Gamera loses his right hand. So while not confirmed, it seems that Gamera may have been killed by Godzilla in the Planet of the Monsters continuity. Godzilla vs. the Devil This is a fake, cancelled Godzilla film that was supposed to be Godzilla's big return to the big screen after Terror of Mechagodzilla's release. 
Supposedly, it never got past the planning stages, and the film's plot had Godzilla battling several demons before killing Satan himself. However, like I said, this film was never actually in development, or was even pitched. The film was first purported to be in the works in issue 5 of the magazine Japanese Giants in October of 1978. Supposedly, the film would be worked on by both Toho and UPA, with a budget of $4 million and a script written by Ruben Berkovich. Despite the film being reported in two more magazines in 1978 and 1981, the film never actually happened, with the creator of Godzilla, Tomoyuki Tanaka, stating in 1980 that the film didn't exist. So was Godzilla vs. the Devil ever in development? Maybe. Kaiju historians and superfans have discovered evidence of its existence in books. But yet again, when the creator of Godzilla says that it doesn't exist, it probably doesn't exist. Mecha Godzilla Sonic In the video game Sonic Adventure, and by extension its remaster, Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut, you can find a robot designed after Sonic the Hedgehog in the Egg Carrier. For years, fans were confused about its existence, as it couldn't be Metal Sonic, as Metal Sonic is right next to it. But finally, fans figured it out. This robot is actually a reference to the Showa-era Mechagodzilla, as this robot has a similar torso, knees, finger cannons, and eyes to Mechagodzilla. Godzilla Doom Island Doom Island was a cancelled Godzilla toy line that was very 1990s. How 90s? How about Godzilla in battle armor? And dinosaurs everywhere. Who would win in a fight? Godzilla or a T-Rex? How about Mechagodzilla versus a Stegosaurus? Only a handful of these figures were ever released through contest giveaways, similar to the cancelled 1998 cartoon toys that I talked about earlier. Now you might be wondering, what's Doom Island? Well, it's just an island filled with dinosaurs. I guess you could speculate that the island is filled with toxic radiation, because most of the returning monsters in this toy line have new designs, like Varen, Baragon, and Megalon. Megalon especially gives off a lot of Transformers Generation 2 energy, and Geras and Kamunga also have battle armor just like Godzilla. In fact, Angiris looks a little bit like the Cart Titan's tank mode from Attack on Titan. Finally, there's the Mega Mutation figures, where Godzilla and Desestroya are rocking some spikes that come out of their thighs. Their chests also open up to reveal battering ram-like organ bone things. Not really a fan of the lore implications that Godzilla can open up his chest to fire off a bony organ as a weapon. Godzilla vs. Berserk In 1992, anime designer Yutaka Izibuchi submitted a 14-page story draft of a new entry in the Heisei Godzilla films. This film, titled Godzilla vs. Berserk, no, Godzilla does not fight guts in this, would introduce Mechagodzilla into the series. But instead of it being a human creation, he's a mass of alien organic machinery called Berserk, who eventually molds himself into a more traditional Mechagodzilla. Concept art for Berserk kind of reminds me of the Boomer at the end of the first episode of Bubblegum Crisis. Anyways, the film would also introduce the Super X-3, two films early of its introduction in Desestroya. The film ultimately didn't happen, as Toho wanted a more traditional Mechagodzilla. However, elements of this film would be used in Godzilla vs. Desestroya, Godzilla 2000, and obviously, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. Chibiko Special Chibiko Special was a monster-themed game show that aired between October of 1971 and September of 1972. 
The show featured various Godzilla kaiju, like Gigan, Gabara, Mothra, King Ghidorah, and even Godzilla himself. There was even a kaiju featured on the show called Mechani Godzilla, who was actually the very first robot Godzilla, as he predates Mechagodzilla by a couple of years. The show would even introduce original kaiju, and many of them would go on to star in episodes of Go God Man, like Shalarji, Sunozillas, and Yasugan. Sadly, this show wouldn't be well archived, and because of this, the entire show is lost media. Shin Ultraman and Shin Godzilla Released in May of 2022, Shin Ultraman is a reboot of the Ultraman franchise, directed by Shinji Yuguchi, and written and produced by Anno. The film serves as a spiritual sequel to Shin Godzilla, in that it's the second of the three films in Anno and Higuchi's Shin series of films, reimaginings of classic tokusatsu characters. Despite being stated that Shin Ultraman isn't canon to Shin Godzilla, many fans still believe the films to be set in the same continuity. Fans believe this for multiple reasons. In Shin Ultraman, there's an unnamed government official who's played by Yutaka Takanuchi, who played Akasaka in Shin Godzilla. The kaiju in the film are also referred to as giant, unidentified life forms, and the film also features the fictional bomb, the Mop 2, which appears in Shin Godzilla. And finally, in the book Shin Ultraman Design Works, it's stated that Shin Godzilla and Shin Ultraman might be connected via their worldviews. Despite all of this, it's been said over and over again that Shin Ultraman isn't canon to Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla does make a cameo in the film in the film's title sequence, although this was just an easter egg referencing the title sequence to the original Ultraman show. But don't worry, Shin Godzilla does make another appearance in the film, through Gomez. The kaiju Gomez featured in the film is actually a heavily modified version of Shin Godzilla's CGI model. This was done as a reference to the original Gomez in the original Ultraman show. As in that show, Gomez was portrayed using a modified Godzilla suit. The Monsterverse Saved Godzilla as revealed by longtime Godzilla producer Shogo Tomiyama, after the release and financial disappointment of Godzilla Final Wars in 2004, Toho had no plans for the franchise and were okay with the franchise being retired permanently. Godzilla had become so unpopular in Japan that children didn't know who he was, and adult fans of the franchise were mocked. That was until 2014, when Legendary and Gareth Edwards brought Godzilla back from the dead with Godzilla 2014 and the MonsterVerse. This inspired Toho to make more Godzilla projects, with Shin Godzilla being greenlit because of Godzilla 2014's success. So if it wasn't for the MonsterVerse, Shin Godzilla, Minus One, the anime trilogy, and a Singular Point wouldn't exist. But maybe giving the MonsterVerse the credits of saving Godzilla isn't fair. After all, the only reason the MonsterVerse happened was because of Bono's attempts at getting a Godzilla film released in the United States after the release of Final Wars. So in a way, Godzilla is only as popular as he is right now because of Bono. God's Godzilla God's Godzilla is a cancelled 1979 Godzilla film that was meant to kickstart the next era of Godzilla. The plot of the film takes place in the middle of World War III, where the gods of Earth, who are actually aliens, arrive on Earth in a spaceship. They then discover Godzilla and revive him. The United Nations are then like, oh crap, Godzilla's back, and rush in to defeat him. But then, Jesus arrives and manipulates Godzilla. 
he also inflicts humanity with nightmares and hallucinations. While this is happening, Godzilla and the gods begin to destroy the world, when suddenly, an image of humanity's future is projected upon the skies above Giza, showing humanity's mutated descendants. Jesus' voice then booms over the entire world as he stands on top of one of the pyramids and shouts, Behold your future! And then Godzilla crouches like a sphinx, and Jesus returns to heaven. So this film was cancelled for a couple of reasons. And the most obvious reason is that the film's plot is actually insane. Warning from G. So here's the final story from the Godzilla comic that I want to talk about. You see, Warning from G is about a martial artist who's learned a special killing technique that can kill Godzilla. The dude uses it against Godzilla, and it actually works. Godzilla dies, but at the cost of the martial artist's life, which leaves his pregnant wife a widow. And if you think that's how the story ends, oh no, no, there's... No, it gets a little weirder. When the baby's born, it's slowly revealed that the baby is actually the reincarnation of Godzilla. So yes, Godzilla is now a human baby. And because Godzilla's not really too big on humans, the Godzilla baby attacks his human mother with a giant rock. Written by Shinobu Kei's, Warning from G is one of the strangest Godzilla stories ever made. Sperm Godzilla and Cancer Cell Godzilla Godzilla New Comedy is a story featured in the Godzilla comic Raids Again, and is about various variations of Godzilla. First, we have Cancer Cell Godzilla, who is literally made up of cancer cells from the original Godzilla. So he's literally just like a walking mass of tumors. Horrible. Then there's Leukocyte Godzilla, who is made up of the blood cells of the original Godzilla. It produces acid that comes out of its skin. And finally, there's Sperm Godzilla who is made up of the original Godzilla's sperm. Yeah, manga in the Godzilla franchise is pretty insane. A Space Godzilla. A Space Godzilla is a rejected Godzilla film from the mid-1970s. The film would be adapted into a two-part story featured in the Japanese edition of Starlog magazine in 1979. The story goes like this. Godzilla is dying of diabetes. Off to a great start. Scientists then dissect Godzilla and attempt to communicate with its brain and discover that Godzilla is actually a sentient alien named Rosan from the Godzilla planet and is pregnant. The scientists then decide to turn Rosan's body into a rocket ship and launch the child into space aboard its barely alive mother, who's in a diabetic coma. Once they get back to Godzilla Planet, they're reunited with Roseanne's husband, Kunin. But suddenly, the Godzilla Planet is under attack by an alien race called the Sonarians, who look like humanoid monsters with breasts. Kunin and his child, Lilin, then battle the aliens and save the day. Gee, I wonder why Toho rejected this pitch. It's, it sounds like a muddy maker. All right, and that was the Godzilla Iceberg Remastered. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, and MBs out there, I hope you all enjoyed this. It was, uh, it was fun to make, but also kind of infuriating to make at times, because uh, for some reason Sony Vegas was just like really laggy this time around. I, I don't really know why. Um, I would say it's because of the length of the video, because this is a pretty, this is a pretty long one, but I don't remember the Alien and Predator one, uh, the Iron Man one, and the Superman one, which are all roughly three hours long. I don't remember them being this laggy. I don't know. Sony Vegas is weird. Hope you're all enjoying the Godzilla, or, uh, I guess I should say Kaiju Renaissance, uh, we're kind of in right now. Godzilla's back, uh, Kong, well, Kong never really left. Uh, Gamera is back, at least, I mean, well, he had a Netflix thing, we'll, we'll see what happens next. Uh, Pacific Rim is 
dead. Like I know there's the the Netflix show, but like nobody watched that. I'm not saying it was bad. I I haven't seen it yet, but I, no one really watched it. But you know, I mean, kaiju stuff's popular again, so that's but it's, that's always that's always cool. But what did you guys think of the uh, the video? Did you uh, did you enjoy it? Uh, leave a comment below. You know, what's your favorite entry in the iceberg? Who's your favorite uh, Godzilla kaiju? That's not one of the big five. That being uh, Godzilla, Mechagodzilla, King Ghidorah, Mothra, and Rodan. You know what? Throw it in. And, throw it in. And is there uh, as well. Besides Angiris as well. Well, who's your who's your favorite? If I had to get if I uh, if I had to get mine, probably Baragon. I, I really like Baragon. Although Orga and Biolancy are pretty awesome too. And then Destroy is pretty pretty cool too. But yeah, this Godzilla Iceberg uh, remastered is, has been a long time coming because the original Godzilla Iceberg is not good. Like, I'm not going to unlist it like I did the original uh, Call of Duty Iceberg because it's nowhere near as bad as that one. That video is abysmal. But, like, there were issues with, like, just, just facts in general. Like, I like the original Godzilla vs. the Devil entry in the original Godzilla Iceberg, Godzilla Iceberg, was really bad and had uh, some false information. It, it, it just, I, I got it wrong, essentially. And there are a couple other things I got wrong. So I wanted to correct it, you know, uh, and with better audio, you know, all that, you know. Uh, also, just like a whole bunch of, uh, you know, new, uh, new entries, stuff I missed. Like, for example, like the Shin Godzilla 2 entry in the original one, which is kind of like, maybe, maybe, you know, people people uh, people want to see one. Who knows? Maybe, maybe one will happen. Maybe one will happen. But, uh, you know, obviously in the years since, we actually got information on what Shin Godzilla 2 was going to be. And uh, so, you know, there, there was a lot of out-of-date out of uh, topics there, too. And also there's the Monsterverse Iceberg, which I, you know, I, I partially remastered with this one. And um, that video is also not very good. <laughs> um, um, the audio is not good. And uh, because of a copyright issue... The third commercial break is gone now. It was like a Honey Nut Cheerios ad for Godzilla. Uh, we were partnered with Godzilla and like from like the 70s or 80s, I want to say. But yeah, uh, I'm rambling at this point. I usually do. I always say I do, but I don't know. It's a staple at this point. Uh, next time we're going to... Uh, next, uh, next iceberg, I should say. Um, I'm not super sure yet which what it's going to be. Because here's, th here, here's the thing. I want to do the X-Men Iceberg. I really do. But the but the issue I have is... Do I wait to, like... Till, like, Deadpool 3's out? So I can have, so I can have like, topics relating to that movie as well. Or do I do it... In preparation for Deadpool 3? You know? Like... I... I'm, I'm kind of at a... I don't know. I... I, I I'm not sure... I'm not sure what I want to do next. Um, I'll, but I'll, I'll figure it out in the next few days. Uh, maybe it'll be X-Men. Maybe it'll be a video game one that I don't want to reveal yet. Um, if it is the video game one, it's going to be a shorter one. It's only be like an hour and a half, hour and 40, which is fine. I mean, you guys got like a th borderline three hour long video here, so I, you should be fine, hopefully, with that. But yeah, uh, that's that's it. Um, and in case you're wondering, cause I, I'll probably get like a comment or two. I have not seen GXK and I have not seen Minus One yet. Uh, I don't know anyone in real life that uh, likes kaiju stuff. And I've been made self-conscious about seeing films alone. So I don't see films alone anymore. I would like to, but I've been made self-conscious about it. Um, but yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen GXK or Minus One yet. So I gotta wait for... Uh, well, GXK for streaming, and then minus one for, like, the Blu-ray 4K release. But I'll buy both of them, obviously. Physical media is pretty cool. But yeah, uh, that's it. Rambling. Uh, have a good one, guys. Stay safe and all that, and I will see you guys in whatever iceberg is next. Mm -hmm.